Hello, 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 and uh, welcome to the um, first round, round one of the Menorca Chess International. My name is Michael Rehal, I'm an international master, and I'm doing the live broadcast from my, from my own YouTube channel. Those of you who are connecting from chess.com, also a uh, huge welcome to you all. I'll be doing the tournament uh, broadcast for the whole week in English. So it's two rounds a day. We're starting off with the first round this afternoon. And I'll be joined during the afternoon by uh, Grandmaster Miguel Yescas and other important players uh, who will come and look at the games with us after, after the, the game. We do have uh, live cameras of the, of the venue, but we are having some trouble for the moment with the with the capacity of my computer, so I'll bring them up as soon as I can. Meanwhile, if you want to leave your questions in the chat, I'll be pleased to answer them. I'll be watching the chat regularly, and I'll be able to answer all the different questions. I'm actually going to open it in another window, so I can have it on the screen and see your questions next to the live broadcast. So please, please send me your questions. Tell me if you want to see one or another specific game and we'll be, we'll be here giving our analysis. So games have started. Um, this is the first round of the, of the Menorca Chess International. And as you can see, We've already started the games. I'm going to try and bring up at least one camera in a while. So, uh, yes, uh, the first question, the most important one for Nirajan. Hi, Michael. Hi, Nirajan. Uh, has Hans Niemann withdrawn from the event? Yes. He withdrew this afternoon and uh, a surprising withdrawal. I don't know the full details, but I'll try and get them through to you. I know it's something to do with, um, with the, some of the problems he had in uh, Grinke with his health problems, but I don't have the full details, but I'm going to find out for all of you. Who's playing the tournaments? Well, I do have here the, the list of players, and just to give you an idea, first seed is Arjun Erigaizi, brilliant player. Second seed, Nihal Sarin, these are two players from India with a very high rating, more than 2700. Third player from uh, Slovenia, Vladimir Fedoziev, 2690. Hans Niemann withdrew, so he's not here. But Jordan Van Forest, uh, Chitambaran Aravind, also from India, all these 2600 players. Alan Pichot, Kirill Alexeenko. Alexeenko is just coming, just came from winning a tournament in Alicante, so he's very good form. Max Warmedam, Maxim Lagarde, Voloda Murzin, Chopra Arya. There's about at least 50 grandmasters, 150 title players. This is a brilliant and a very strong tournament. Of course, uh, first first round always we have the stronger players against the, the the weaker players. That's generally normal in a Swiss tournament. But uh, as the tournament progresses, we'll start to see clashes between the the top players playing against each other. So hopefully. We are having very good uh, play here. Uh, woman, I don't have the list by gender, but I did see Polina Shuvarova in the in the dinner area. So she's a very strong international master, woman international master. Um, and I'm checking the there the, quite a lot of women, but not top top players. I think the, she's probably the best player. I'm scrolling down my view now. Yeah, I think Polina is the best player. And she's rated around 2,500. So she's very, very strong. So, as you can see, first board, Eugene Roberts, Fide Master against Arjun Erigaizi. Second board, we have Nihal Sarin, Sarin against Xavier Alfonso. He's a Spanish local player. Third board, as you can see, Inayat Bolat from Kazakhstan 
against Vladimir Fodosev. You can see his uh, screen there. I'm actually going to put my screen a bit smaller and bring this one up a bit bigger. I think this might be good for the for the broadcast. There we go. Always good to have the tape to the board and the times very big. And I'll try and bring up the cameras as long as we can do this. Um, for the moment, what I will do is bring up, I think we did have some image here. Yeah, I'm going to bring this one up here. And hopefully you'll be able to see all this on your screens. Live visuals of the board, we do have them. The thing is, when I brought them up, the, the computer crashed, which is, I'm a bit worried of bringing them up and having the computer crash. But, uh, yeah, let me see if I can do this. They're here just below, but I'm very worried the computer might crash. Mendezovic, buen dia. Yes, I'm doing broadcast in English for this tournament, so you can practice your English. And also it's being broadcast in chess.com, so it's important to for everyone to be able to understand me. Okay, so Fedosev on the third board playing the French defense. As most of you who followed me before know, I normally give a preview of the different games, and then we start going into a bit of detail, and I'll allow you, of course, to choose if you want to see a particular game and that way um, you can we can discuss any of the positions you want um, of the games which are on the live boards there's 24 live boards you can follow the live chess on chess.com as I'm doing myself so this is something you should know fourth board is Jordan Van Forest who's played his first move but apparently his opponent hasn't arrived yet which is uh, interesting fifth board we have an English player international master Bradbury Playing against Alavin Chitambaram. Alexenko on sixth board against one of my students, Pau Marin. Let's see how Pau is doing in these tournaments. He's crossed to 200, only 12 years old, so a young talent from here. Pichot on the seventh board. As you can see, we have up to a total of 25 normal boards. 24 normal boards. And on board 25, we have the streamers. Anna Kramling, she's playing here, she's streaming her games on her own Twitch uh, channel, so you can catch up with her if you want. Also, Alexander Prado is also streaming her games on her Twitch channel. Zachary Zane, I think he's called the Chess Nerd, also streaming his games, and we can see his game here. And then the rest of the games already, here for instance, Baskaran, these are not live boards. We have the pairings, but not the live boards. So, Quite a few interesting games. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and bring up the I'm going to try and bring up the um, the camera of the of the playing venue. But if if there's a crash, please don't leave. Stay with me, okay? If there's a crash, I need you to stay with me. Can you hear me properly? Is the sound good? Let's make sure you can hear me properly. Um, you can go to Lee Chess and you can go to the broadcast, see the boards, or you can see them in chess.com. We're doing the broadcast on chess.com. Just go into chess.com, connect to there, and you can see any all the games if you want to see the games in progress. Here we'll be focusing on the commentary of some of the games. I can use the different colors, I can move the pieces, so I have good, good options of doing all sorts of things. I can do arrows, all sorts of interesting things which you can see on the board to help with the visualization sounds good but the stream is buffering here and there okay so this has to do also with your own um, computer hopefully we're getting there that's the, the the worrying thing for me is to bring up to bring up the if I bring up the um, the, um, the cameras it's, I think I'm going to try because it would be really cool for you to see them so let me see if I can do this, okay? Stay with, hang on with me for a moment. And I'm going to try and bring up the camera. See what happens. We should at least try it, yes? 
So let's see where this is. If I can find where I put this. Hmm. It's not going to be easy. What I'm going to try and do. Yes, buffering a bit. Yes. Yeah, I'm not sure if the if the internet connection is good. Okay. If someone could tell me if it's going well or if it's buffering or what's happened. And I do have the I do have the cameras as I said before, but the thing is I turned them off because the memory use of the of the laptop was already quite big and uh, we were having problems even connecting the stream, which was a, a big pity. So that's why I turned them off. And for the moment it seems to be working. Okay, do you want me to start with any particular particular um, uh, game? Any 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 games you'd like to see to start off with? Um, what I what I can do is I can open up I can open up the chess results. I can do that and bring that on the screen. Let's see if I can bring that on the screen. Chess Menorca. Okay, so I'm going to put in the chat, I'm going to put, yes, because we'll be joining, yeah, he's, he just came to say hello before, he'll be joining very soon. Uh -huh. Okay, so, there you go, this is the, here you can see, I'm leaving on the, in the chat, I'm leaving the, uh, Chess results link, and you can see if you want the games. And what I'm going to do now is bring up, bring up to the to the board. I'm going to try and so you can see the first boards and the players. Let's see if I can do this. Uh, Capture this. I'm just going to bring up the pairing of the first round of the main boards. There you go. And now you can see, in principle, you should be able to see the main boards. So here you can see, if you want, the main boards. And here you can see the, the ratings of the players. Erik Aizi, Nikhal, Fedoseyev, Van Forest, Aravind, Alexeyenko. This is a huge event with very, very good players. As you can see on the, on the chess results. And we'll be posting here the results every now and then. When games start to finish, I can, uh, I can bring this up. And you can all see it on the, on the screen. So let's bring it down for the moment. And as you can see, there's been an exchange of queens on the first board. Let's go to Nikhal's game. Nirajan is asking for Nikhal Sain's game. So let's check Nikhal Sain's game. Okay, let's go from the start. You can do that here. So, Nikhal is a 2700 player, one of the best players in the world. A very, very good blitz player as well, blitz and rapid. He excels at that rhythms and a, a very good classical player, although not at the same level as his blitz and, and rapid uh, game. His opponent, Xavi Alfonso, he's a 2200 player from Spain. Knight f3, d5, d4. Knight f6, c4, bringing the queen's gambit and threatening the move pawn takes pawn. So black played e6, which is the standard move of the queen's gambit. And Sadin goes for knight to c3. This is the main move, knight to c3. However, a lot of players are going g3 nowadays with the Catalan setup. It's becoming more and more and more popular, this Catalan opening setup. Because as Carlson said once, there are not so many forced lines which makes it much easier 
to get out of the book and do um, out of home preparation and just get a game. But Sadim went for the knight c3 main move, bishop to e7, and bishop to g5. So we have a clear queen's gambit, main line, h6, bishop to h4 is the main move here, although capturing is also possible, and Sarin went for the capture. This seems to be a decision based on leaving the book as soon as possible. Because bishop to h4 is much more popular as a move. And normally black goes for b6, which is the Tartakora line. And white can go rook b1, b4. This is the Tartakora variation, very popular as well. By exchanging on f6, Sarin brings another way of playing to the board. He gives away his bishop pair, which is not very good. Black will take back to the bishop. But he intends to play one of two different ways, and I still don't know which way he will choose. One way is to go long castle and launch an attack with g4, h4, and g5. This would be the aggressive variation. Uh, you would take advantage of the black pawn on h6 to find an opening route with g5 opening up the lines for the attack. Very interesting. Maybe Nikhal will go for this idea. The other idea is just to play with bishop e2 and castle. Possibly putting a rook on d1. And waiting for black to play c5, opening up the position for the bishops. And then try and go for one of the weaknesses on d5. And all of this, meanwhile, making sure the bishop on c8 doesn't become active. Because if the bishop on c8 doesn't become active, then we have the two bishops are not performing well together. We have the black bishop, the dark squared bishop, which is quite good. But the light square bishop is not performing. So we have to wait and see what Nihal has in mind for this game. If I had to give if I had to give my opinion, I would suspect that he's gonna go for the long castle and g4 h4 move. So I'm gonna bet on this idea here. I'm going to bet on the idea of g4 and h4. This is my, this is the way I think he will go. But, of course, we have to wait and see. These are the results. And this is the YouTube. So, I have to be careful here. Take this off. Oops. Something weird is happening now. I'm still trying to get the knack of these uh, of these applications, so it's tricky for me. To see how this works. Okay, there we go. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Do you think he'll play Long Castle H4 and G4? Or do you think he'll go for bishop e2 and short castle? What do you think he's going to do? What do you think he will do? For the moment, his player is going to play b6. And he's thinking of his move. I'd like to hear your opinion. Fair chess. You say the opponent is weaker. It's true. But Xavier is a strong player. I know him personally. I've played against him. I actually played against him two years ago in the league game. I won the game, but it wasn't an easy game. He is strong course far away from the level of uh, Nihal but what I'm thinking is do you think he'll go for the long castle or do you think he'll go for the short castle I'd be interested to hear your ideas b6 may seem to be a weakening move but he is trying to get his bishop out via b b bishop b7 
It's what I was mentioning before about the development of his uh, light squared bishop. So what do you think? Nikhal will go for long castle or for short castle? What is your what is your idea? What is your plan? Give me all your thoughts. Give me your thoughts. What's he going to do? Yeah, I think he's going to go for long castle. But it's good to get the chat involved in the games. Very good. Long castle and checkmate, says Nirajan. Nirajan says long castle and checkmate. Okay. That wouldn't be surprising at all to me. Because also I think Nijan could go for this. Diego says short castle. Diego goes for the positional, for the solid option. It's also very good. I think we're going to wait here for a couple of minutes more. Against Kramnik, short castle. Haha, <laughs> that's a good one. So you think that maybe against the weaker opponent, he'll go for the long castle and go for the attack. Whereas against a strong opponent, he might prefer to go short castle and play a bit more positionally, a bit more solidly. No? Also, the fact that black played b6 and bishop b7 may suggest some ideas with c takes d5. But I don't think so. I think he won't capture the pawn because if he does, black will recapture and the bishop could even come out to e6 or even to g4. And b6, although it may be weakening, it does allow black to play c5 further on. So this wouldn't be so clear. I think uh, c takes d5, I don't think it would be the move. At least that's not the move that I would do. So let's go back to the position of the game. I need to learn how to get back to the reload board. Okay. So if I do some moves, b6 ah long castle yes so as i suggested nikhal has gone for the long castle nikhal says i think the whole point of taking an f6 was to out prepare the lower rated opponent and put him right on pressure i agree i agree i agree uh, they are not out of book yet this is a known line i i don't play the queen's gambit and i know this exists um, so they're not out of book, but probably uh, his opponent will not be so familiar with the details of this variation. He'll probably be more familiar with the other variation, which is the main line. So from a practical point of view, this is quite a good uh, decision by, by Sadin. Okay, so obviously Black has to do something against the launch of the pawns on the king side, which is very dangerous. So my way of thinking is that black should try and strike in the center to activate the, the bishop. Not so easy to do, because you can see the rook on d1 is doing a strong attack on the queen on d8. Actually, if Nihal scores a crushing win in this game, I'll try and get him in here to to annotate the game because I know him personally and we have a good relationship. Fairchess says, why did not like the Laska variation because he, he took on f6? This is interesting because the Laska variation is normally when black plays the knight to e4. So he can do it straight away or first attack the bishop and then go knight to e4. So maybe Maybe Nihal doesn't like this variation much, and that's one of the other reasons he decided to exchange on f6. We don't know. We can ask him later on. Okay, let's go back to the, the current position.
Here we are. And I think that while we're waiting for his opponent to play, we could probably jump to another board and see if there's any other interesting games being played. For example, let's go and see the second, the first board. Arjun Erigaisi. Already quite down on the clock. You can see that his uh, time is actually quite low. It's quite surprising. His time is low. Surprising. Very surprising. Very surprising. He's trying to think with what piece he should recapture. Oops. There's been a correction on this board. Ah. So the moves were not correct. There was a, a mistake in the broadcast. Oh, they're doing some changes now. Okay. I think now he's not so low on time. So... Something, something happened here. Uh, I think uh, the queens were exchanged on d8, and it's a different position. Okay, this is an ending. We'll come back to here afterwards. But black seems to be okay. He has the center pawns. Bishops are okay. He's going to finish his development. Things are probably going quite well for Eddie Geisy in this position. Okay, let's see the game of Vladimir Fedosev, Fedosev in Spanish, Fedosev in Russian, I think it's the way they pronounce it. Playing with black against Kazakhstan player Inayat Borat. So this is a French defense. One of my favorite variations. I played this play with white and with black. The Winnower variation. Here a3 is the main line attacking the bishop, but bishop to d2 is also very interesting with the threat knight to, b, knight to b5. It's a very interesting variation, but of course a3 is the main line. And the strategy behind this variation works like this. White accepts a double pawn, which is a weakness. It's a double pawn. It does tend towards the center, which is good, but it's a weakness. In exchange for the double pawn, he has the two bishops. The bishop on f1, and more importantly, the bishop on a3. Now the bishop on a or c1, sorry, the bishop on c1 can sometimes become very strong in these positions. For example, imagine black closes the game and white is able to put his bishop on a3. Look at that bishop. That bishop there on a3 is a very, very good piece, dominating all these dark squares. So when black exchanges off his bishop to double the pawns he has to be careful he has to be careful not to allow white's dark square bishop to get a strong diagonal very very careful of course Fedosiev knows this so he's playing carefully he went knight to e7 and queen to a5 hitting the pawn on c3 here, typically, the move is bishop to d2. And now, he drops back with the queen. You might think, didn't he just lose a tempi, going to a5 and then dropping back? Yes, but the bishop can no longer go to the a3 square. So this is the idea behind queen to a5 and then dropping back to c7. Bishop to d3. And in fact, this is the position of the board. So here, normally we don't want to play c4 too soon because the bishop just drops back and then we reroute the bishop to a3. What you normally do here is one of two plans. 
Knight to c6, bishop to d7, a long castle, plan one. Or b6 with bishop a6 in mind, which would be plan two. I personally like b6 straight away. Sometimes, if I want to play b6, I have to play a6 first to prevent knight to g5 and queen to h5, launching attack on the king side. Also, in these positions, we have to be careful if we decide to castle to make sure white can't do the bishop sacrifice on a7. Look, the, the computer line went up, which means the sacrifice is good. Threatening checkmate. Normally the checkmate is unlike this. There are several ways to win, but the most topical way is this way. And here I'd have to think a bit which is the best way to finish black off, but I have no doubt this will happen. Let me think just a moment. Maybe just go f4 and castle an f4, f5. That might just be enough because black can't bring pieces to the queen side. And if he moves the knight, then there's a mate on h7. Yeah, maybe just castle. And launch an attack with f4, f5. This is extremely dangerous and according to the computer is all already winning. Okay, this will not happen because Fedosiev is very good and Fedosiev, although he doesn't want the bishop to reroute, he, he wants the castle on the king's side and doesn't want to allow this sacrifice. So he played c4, hitting the bishop. Bishop dropped back and knight to d7. Maybe f6 is in the books as a possibility. <coughs> Nilesan asks, did Van Forest opponent forfeit? Let's check. Yeah, for the moment he hasn't come. I'm not totally sure how long we have to wait for our opponents to come, but typically it's 15 minutes or 30 minutes here in Spain. And already we've done 45, so Van Forest has won his first game without playing, which is in principle unfortunate that he could play the game, but of course he'll be happy to take back the win and rest a bit more from his travels. still getting used to this to this system of of streaming but please leave your questions in the chat and I'll try and answer them as soon and as best as possible Okay, so let's go and see another board. Okay, here we have <clears throat> Grandmaster Kirill Alexenko against Pau Marin Feragut, 2203, candid master, very young. Let's see how the game went. <clears throat> e4, c5. Pau generally plays the the knight of defense, but Kirill 
out of the book as soon as possible it goes for the bishop b5 variation knight d7 theoretical d4 take take with the knight also take capture with the queen as possible knight f6 dropping back bishop d3 doesn't seem tremendously aggressive this variation for white black goes for the dragon system Seems to me that black has a nice position with the dragon system. Not very aggressive. No queenside attack, castle, nothing, nothing dangerous here. Bishop to e3. Queen to c7. a4, preventing the black's expansion of pawns on the queen side. Very sensible b6, trying to get the bishop out to b7, and a white's turn here. So what do you think of this uh, position, guys? What do you guys think of this position? Would you take white or would you take black? Give me your thoughts in the chat. White or black? I'm thinking as well. I'm trying to decide if I would take white or black here. The computer says that white is slightly better. You can see this here on the left. There's a, a white bar, and it says exactly 0.76 0 for white. Strong players avoid theory, especially against young kids who like to memorize variations, and they can play them out without thinking. So, But here, funnily enough, it's Kirill who spent a lot of time in the opening, if the clocks are right. So would you take white or black here? Any ideas? I think I would take I think I would take white, but I'm not totally sure how I would carry on the game. I'm not sure he wants to go knight d5, hitting the queen. Could be an idea. Or to play with f4, knight f3, and go for an attack on the king's side. I'm not quite sure which is the best move here. And I, I'm maybe Alexenko isn't sure either, because look, he's taking his time to, to make a decision here. It's difficult to say. Difficult to say. Which is the best move? Difficult to say. It seems to me that if he's taking so much time, it's probably because he wants to go knight to d5 and he's considering the different options that that position would give him. So let's do a variation, see what happens. Knight to d5, hitting the queen. Probably knight takes knight. And bishop to b7. And here I'm suspecting c4. And I was wondering about this position. What would happen if black situates his knight on c5 and even plays a5 to support the knight on c5? How would the position uh, be? I'm not totally sure because although it is true that the knight goes to... to, to um, c5 to keep it there he has to play a5 and i'm wondering if white has ideas like knight to b5 maybe bishop to d4 maybe putting some pressure on the e-file i think the white has still some small advantage in this position but it's not totally clear for me also the bishop on b7 is shut in so it's not totally clear who would be better here? Computer suggests that white is slightly better, but this is just uh, one uh, computer analysis. Okay, so Kirill has played. Let's see what he's done. He 
he went for queen to d2 this is not so critical and even as you can see the computer suggests it might be a mistake i don't think it's a blunder but it might not be the best the best move in the position now, i think what he wants to do is he wants to play bishop to h6 that's the idea he wants to do now exchange off the bishop on g7 and maybe then go for an attack but uh, according to the computer black does seem to have sufficient resources in this position okay we'll definitely keep an eye on this game and come back in a while to see what's happening so on board seven we have Pichot hello Fisher 960 welcome to the stream and please leave your questions and your messages on the on the um, on the chat in the chat and we'll see them and try and answer as soon as possible you can talk to me in spanish leave your message in spanish and i'll translate for the rest of the for the rest of the the chat of course podéis dejar vuestros comentarios en castellano por supuesto pero en la retransmisión hoy es en inglés so i'd be contracted by by the i've been signed up by the tournament to do this tournament in english they wanted to do a projection of english and we're on chess.com as well so this is a stream that's coming on chess.com hello to all the fans on chess.com and uh, obviously what i want to do is uh, use my channel as well to do some english commentary which i think is very good and for those of you who speak English, fantastic. And for those of you who don't, you need to learn English, which is good. Okay. If you want to see Divis, he's doing commentary in Spanish on his own channel. So you can, he's in the next door. He, you can always also listen to him in Spanish. And Miguel Yescas will be coming in and out every now and then. Faustino will see his game in a while, but for the moment, he's not on the list of uh, boards which are being broadcasted, so we can't see his game yet. Hopefully during the tournament, I'll get Faustino in here to interview him. It would be ni nice to hear about him. And we'll see, we'll see him uh, here in the broadcast as soon as possible. Okay, so he, this is the game of Pichot. He's from Spain, formerly from Argentina, but now living and playing under the Spanish flag. He plays with black against Ejan Hebar, candid master. Another queen's gambit. But this move order with knight to b7, <coughs> one of the objective is to confuse white and sometimes catch, capture on c4 and protect the pawn with knight to b6. So white tries to recover the pawn. And black doesn't defend it, but prepares to expand and play bishop to b7. Black prevents this expansion. c5. Take. And this is the position on the board. We now have a typical position of isolated pawn. Isolated d pawn. To Isolani. White has a weak pawn on d4. Well, a weak pawn, a pawn which is not protected, but he does have two open fires to work with and a lot of space for his pieces. Uh, typical plans here would be to drop the bishop back to b1 and try and go for some tactics. Also to play the rook on e1, knight to e5. These are typical attacking moves the black has here. Do you think he will make it to the top 50 in the world? <clears throat> it's difficult to say because there are a lot of kids who play very well when they are young but not all of them play well when they are old not all of them some of them stop playing some of them decide to do other things obviously he's a very talented player a anyone can see that but in my experience I'm very wary of uh, making claims that certain players will become world champions or 
the best in the world. It's very difficult, especially when they're very young. It's very, very hard to know. There are many very good players have just become decent players, but nothing more when they're old, even though they were very promising when they were young. So, yeah, he's very talented, and hopefully he'll make it to the top, but we'll have to see. Guys, I'm going to take my first mini break. I'm going to go and see a bit the playing hall, and we'll be back in a while. Don't leave. We'll be back in five or ten minutes, okay? Stay here. I'll leave the board on here.
Bueno, pues ya estamos de regreso, amigos. En inglés. Y además, con un amigo que en Divis, we're back. We're back, and now we're my friend uh, David Martinez, El Divis. Hi, everyone. Captain of the Spanish national team, before the ladies, now the national team, mm -hmm. and also a good friend. And, yes. Uh, Recently married, he invited me to his wedding. We had a good time. Lo pasamos muy bien, muy bien, muy bien, muy bien. So David is going to try and put the cameras on. Yeah. So now we're going to continue the broadcast, but there might be a bit of uh, something might happen when we turn the cameras on. But we'll yeah, try to get the camera. It okay. It will be easy. Okay. So then we have it. two options: to repeat with that uh, program or try to capture from my screen. What Where do you think, think of the programs without? Yeah, without to uh, DVD here. Um, Buscar and um, what is the name? I um, Emo or something yeah. like that. Right. Emo? Yeah. Open. This is the. Okay, it does, you, we can't see it there, no? Okay. Yeah. Open. Okay, great. Login? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, it was uh, Chess Prisma, no? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, Okay. Here. Okay, so now we're logging into the cameras. Try to capture this. So, capture. No, we no. say with the. From here. Uh, yeah. But uh, where do I put this? Uh, start to start to go work. Okay. Uh, no, El Divis. The best channel. Yeah, Divis, the best YouTube Divis, channel uh, in the, the world. Divis TV, even, even I don't know my, uh, my channel, right? El Divis is real enigma. <laughs> are, you the, are you King Enigma? Okay. So here the and camera. I'll capture this. I think this is. Uh, we're going to put the. Okay. Okay. Okay, so with a bit of luck, it won't be lagging anymore. We're going to try and capture the the camera and give you, and that's that means it's lagging. Yes. Uh, yeah. ¿Qué tal, Miguel? I'm joined by Miguel Iescas now. The thing is, we're having a bit of trouble with the lag, Miguel. Oh, yeah? We turned on the cameras. That's a bit delayed. Come on. We turned on the cameras, and now ah. we have some trouble with the lag, but hopefully it will get better. So, yeah. how's it going, Miguel? Well, very fine. I, I was uh, having a look at this first round, which uh, usually in many open tournaments is uh, not quite interesting, but here it is. It's interesting. And in fact, yeah, there are many games which uh, will... Proof the favorites, for example, Eric Icy, okay, playing with Black. He's facing some feeder master, uh, a man, I don't know his age, but 40, 50. Okay. And uh, he knows what he's doing with his English, and uh, he got a very solid position, in fact, desperately to win. I mean, he's has 500 ELO points, 500 more, you points know? more, yeah. So you need to win, yes yeah, and yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, and it will not be easy because uh, Black is uh, quite uh, playing quite safe. I, I don't know, there are many moves. Almost everything is equal. I mean, you can play Bishop A3, Rook E1, take on F5 and Knight G5. There are many ways to play. And, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, it will be some work to do for yes, but it looks very safe for white this yeah move. bishop a3 is quite looks quite like quite quite a good move because well i want to set an c5 yeah yeah to restrict the knight yeah yeah uh, the, the only problem is that if rookie one later some bishop a5 may come back yeah. uh, no okay black black is okay of course but uh, at least white is uh, playing his game i mean he wants to make a draw of course yes and he yeah. Trade queens and uh, playing very positional. So this is the kind of thing you don't want to to face in an open tournament. Yeah. First round, 2200 player and yeah. playing well. Yeah. Uh, and also, no queens. Uh, some former pupil of you, uh, Power Power. Ying, Power was playing quite good as well. Very well. You know, I think the position is completely fine for Black. Yeah. After a few moves, no, he already broke yeah. on d5. This is the lucky you mean, no? No. I bishop b7, rook one, and then I d5 would... was played. 
the, the computer was suggesting instead of queen to d2 to go knight d5 straight away at right. a different type of position. That makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. But Alexenko thought quite a bit here, play queen d2. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, that but seems yeah, to he went d5. Yeah, in this position, yeah. Right? He took pawn takes d5. Okay. And I think, of course, black is going to take knight d5, probably knight takes d5, bishop d5. This already happened. Uh, he and just bishop played bishop one. f1. Yeah. yeah. Bishop to b7. Yeah. In general, uh, you, you look at the bishops and the black bishops are playing on the center in this fianchetto. Excellent. And, uh, well, I mean, it's true white has uh, this uh, pawn majority on the queen side. Yes. But uh, if you want to push this pawn majority, usually you would play c4 before, not yes. a4. Yes, not a4, yes. And uh, it will not be easy for white to, to use that. And black yeah. can... Uh, black does have these pawns at some point. Yeah, e5. You could try to advance these pawns. Yeah. yeah, e5 may come any moment and rooks to the center, rook d8, rook c8. And he's very, very okay. So, I don't know. I mean, very, very nice after already 14 moves, no? Mm -hmm. uh, quite, quite many moves. And uh, the, your people is playing quite well. Huh? He's playing very well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He has quite a good position. Of course, Alexenko is a very good player. He might yeah. find a way to, 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 to try and drum up something. He won the Alicante tournament last week. Yeah, so he, yeah. He, he, he scored he's, eight out of nine. He's playing, the, he's playing very strongly now. Yeah, so. we came in the past. Uh, oh. Sitting together, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, we didn't talk before, but uh, D he's a really nice guy. He's living in Valencia, in Altea. Do we know the reason that uh, Nieman officially didn't come? Do we know that reason? No. We know he said he couldn't come. Or he yeah, hasn't. he didn't come. But do we know official reason or not? No, he didn't give any explanation. So we're still waiting for that. Somebody then. told me that uh, he just won a tournament, a very small. Yeah, he tournament. won Green Cup tournament. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was first price twenty thousand euro. Yes. And maybe he wanted just to have some fun. Maybe. maybe, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> no, maybe. <laughs> but okay, it was very impolite. But Alex Eber just won as well, and he came anyway. Yeah. I mean. No, I don't know. I mean, somebody said that maybe. Okay, I don't like to judge because you never know. Maybe he's feeling not well. Maybe some. He did have some problems with his ears. Yeah. But they weren't bad enough to prevent him winning the tournament. Yeah. So no, it was so not so. It bad. was not so bad. <laughs> no? yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what uh, I mean. If he's in the hospital, then he can't be winning yeah. the tournament. No? Of well, course, we'll, the, we'll try and find out. We'll the organizers out. were not very happy uh, about this because, well, I mean, they were keeping a room for him. He was going to stream the game. Yeah. There was some extra equipment. Yeah, yeah. Well, this position looks very, very fine for Black. Yeah. The only this thing is uh, maybe Bishop H6. I, I think I, I, if Bishop H6 should is not working. Then I think uh, if this move is working, then hmm. maybe white still fine. To try and exchange the bishops, weaken a bit the king. Yeah, and e7 is under attack. e7 is under attack. No, of course black is fine, but uh, in this way, I, I I don't know if bishop takes h6 and e5 oh. is working because c2 would be hanging. Oh, this is but, a tactic. Uh, yeah, but it's uh, very scary, I mean, to play like this. First of all, White has knight f5 if he wants to make Oof. a move immediately. Yeah. But for Pau, that would be very good. That would nice, be very no? good. Yeah. Knight f3, he would take with the bishop. That's not so good. Yeah. So. Not so easy to face this move. Not so yeah. easy. Not so easy at all, eh? Yeah. Uh, but he, if he doesn't play bishop h6, look, uh, some rooks are coming to d8. It's very annoying for White. I mean, if Black oh. plays rook fd8, uh, okay, suddenly the queen on d2. I mean, Black can be better I yeah. think, here with his powerful bishops. Yeah. Uh, black can be very soon better, so I, I don't know. It's a very interesting. It's game. Un unclear what to play. Is it possible to play or too slow to play bishop to e2, bishop to f3, or this is just too slow? But he just played bishop f1, no? That is true. The previous that move, is true. so I don't believe this is. No, doesn't make idea. much sense. No, yeah. he, he, he should try something, but I don't know what. <laughs> okay, we can. I, I can tell you some other games. Uh, Faustino yeah. Oro, uh, we don't have the broadcast. We don't have the broadcast yet. Yeah, yes. but he was uh, much better uh, some five moves ago. But now her uh, opponent uh, improved mm -hmm. uh, her position. I didn't like uh, the way uh, Faustino played the strategic part, mm -hmm. and I'm uh, ready to talk with him after the game oh, just to okay. ask him why you didn't okay. play this move. It, it, it was the typical position that for uh, for grandmaster level, it's completely winning after the opening. I, I mean, Black played a Janish in okay. the uh, Rui Lopez, and he got everything you're looking for in a Janish to okay. take a C3, double okay. draws. Uh, Everything, but suddenly he in the next few moves he played too slow in my opinion, okay. and the white is uh, arranging some kind of uh, defense, okay. and we will see. It's very interesting. Okay. Well, well, someone asked about the about Faustino. Yeah. And we'll try and get him in here at some point. Yeah. Uh, during the tournament. Of course. Do you think that um, all this hype, him playing all these bullet games, all this attention by the media, is this good for him? 
Or at least, is it not bad? It is dangerous. Dangerous is the word. I yeah. think so. I think, uh, I mean, his family should be careful about all this because somehow. But okay, he looks a very balanced uh, hmm. boy. Uh, he might not clever. even know about anything of this. Yeah, probably he's just uh, focusing on his chess and. Uh, Today I was talking with him because we came in the same bus. I was very lucky to have Alexeyenko on my right and the Faustino was just sitting behind. once in behind. Yeah. And then I gave him some studies uh, to solve. So okay. the trip was very short and he was enjoying a lot solving these uh, okay. you know, artistic end games. And uh, I like uh, Clearly he's very talented. That's very yeah, clear. No, it's so but there's so many talented kids at that age. And you never know which, which one of them will go to, this, to, the, to the next step. Yeah. Because of course he, I mean, I've never played against Carlson, never beat him, much less played against him, but th these guys lose games in Bullet and Exp in mm -hmm. the Bullet. I mean, it's not so... It's, but, but, I mean, it's like it's, you, you, you defeated Carlson, you're the best in the world, next world champion. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. And not like that. It's too early. It's too early. He came uh, from this tournament, San Vicente, and uh, he didn't play so well there. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, he scored five and a half. A normal result for his rating. Yeah, right? he didn't win rating, I mean, which is very strange because now he's only 23-30. Mm. And usually, okay, I, I think he should uh, play... You would expect him to rate. Yeah. But we all know that sometimes tournaments don't go so well. Yeah. I ask him... Uh, so why do this you tournament could be important for him after the other one. Yeah. How does he perform here? Yeah, I asked him, uh, what do you like more, what do you enjoy more, to play Blitz or to play Classical? What did he tell you? And he was thinking for a while, no. and he said, probably Blitz. Uh, and, uh, well, I don't know, I mean, it's still very young, I mean, many things uh, can happen. But you're right that uh, there are many boys. Many, a many lot of fight. In Grenke, there was this kid uh, from Turk to, to Turkey, Turkey. Edgar Moss. Mm -hmm. He's 13 years old, Grandmaster. Mm -hmm. Tremendous play. Yeah. So many. I was in Egypt in the World Championships. So many good players there. Yeah, and it's under clear 10, that under the, eight. the age of uh, talent has gone down. Yeah, 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 it's getting down and down. Yeah. Alessio is asking why Nima doesn't play. Uh, we do know he didn't appear today. He sent a message. We do know that. Yeah. But it's unclear to us at the moment exactly the reasons that he hasn't come but i'm sure we'll find out as far as i know he didn't give any reasons he just said uh, sorry i'm not coming yeah. and that's it that doesn't seem uh, very serious uh, of course the yeah. organizers were you know, quite, expect to be more quite unhappy yeah. quite unhappy of course it, of course yeah. i've put the game between uh Volodar mulzin another really good kid mm -hmm. now this kid when he was 12 he was mm -hmm. very very good now i think he's 16 or 17 Wow. And uh, 2632 from the Russian School of Chess. Quite serious. Very, very strong. Rating. Very strong. I've seen him in several tournaments. Yeah. It's very, very good. He very has good. a much better position. Yeah. Enzo Cabrero. Hello to Enzo. Hello from Argentina. Miguel, what was it like playing against Karpov? Yeah, well, I played many games. You, didn't you, with, uh, you, you, you won against him in the tournament in Holland, no? I beat him twice. One in a rapid tournament in Villarrobledo in 1987. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and the second time in Dos Hermanas, in a okay. close tournament, uh, which was quite strong. But he beat me many more. <laughs> he beat so, you more times? Yeah, we played something like 15 games. 15 made, games? Wow. Yeah, we made so many draws, but uh, wow, wow. he was a difficult opponent, I mean. But at least, uh, for me, it was not so difficult to play with Kartov like with uh, some other very strong, like Anand or Kramik. Because, really? Yeah, because uh, Karpov, he had very strong points. But, uh, for example, in tactics, I could fight in, okay. my, in my peak okay. or in opening preparation, I could, in fact, probably it was better than Karpov. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he, didn't, he was not so strong in some mm. fields, you know, mm. at, at the end of his career, of course. I'm talking uh, in the 90s, uh, mm. before he was almost perfect in yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah? But uh, at the end of his career, okay, he was vulnerable. In some, I was getting very good positions from the opening in mm. some games. And sometimes in some very wild positions, I could uh, sometimes outplay him, but um, sometimes. He's <laughs> a very good player. But, uh, you, have to catch, you have to catch him young. With yeah. him really young. No, I remember after I beat him in uh, Dos Hermanas, the next time we played, it was some team championship, and he played a fantastic game, and he wanted oh. very much to beat him, to beat me, you know? He wanted to He He was very competitive, and we were uh, not friends, but we were in very good terms. In some tournaments, we were playing backgammon, you know. Oh, nice. He wanted desperately to win, you know. And backgammon was as well. very competitive yeah. in everything, you know, everything. But it was, of course, a privilege. Do you know who Bodana is? 
Bodana. I, I know who she is. Do you no, know? No, 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 no. So, uh, Silvia Shiva asks, what do you think of Bodana? Is she a potential world champion in the future? That Shiva, it's the same thing as with Faustino. Bodana is under eight from uh -huh. England. She's 2,100. Mm -hmm. She went to play the European Championships with uh, ladies of International mm -hmm. Master and played very well. So, she's a huge talent. Uh -huh. But uh, I think we must repeat the same idea as uh, with Faustino. You just never know because uh -huh. uh, they can be very good when they're young, but mm -hmm. life takes you in different directions. Mm -hmm. Some are very motivated at some point, but then they stop being motivated. You never know. David? We have here the organizer, Our director. David Pons. They are doing a great job here. By the way, maybe somebody doesn't know, we have more than 400 players. We are in uh, one of the uh, beautiful islands of Menorca. Uh, I'd like to put the school. camera up, but if yeah. I put the camera up, then it crashes. So no cameras for the moment. Yeah, well... I'm having trouble with the cameras. We'll, DVs will find the solution. We'll have but some for ways we don't have. to solve it, yeah. yeah. Uh, we have three rooms. Uh, the main room with uh, top boards. Uh, there is a second room in this hotel and we have still some boards in the second hotel yes. which is 300 yes. meters away. But everybody seems to be very happy, so congratulations on it. Everybody is... Uh, what do you think about it? the streamers room? Yeah. What, what is your opinion about no, players I, I, streaming their games with the cameras? I fully support it. Yeah. I think it's very good for uh, chess promotion. And I'm very glad that the organizers, they are helping these people. Because these people is also helping chess hmm. to give it a wider audience. We were talking now with Divis about Anna Kramling. Uh, she, she's the daughter of uh, Grandmaster uh, Pia Kramling mm -hmm. and uh, Juan Manuel Leon. And he's, uh, I mean, having an uh, incredible success. I mean, she's, her rating is not very high. I mean, I no, she's 2,100. 2,000 player, 2,100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, she's doing a great job promoting the game. So. Do you want to say something or the... the no? Okay. We will <laughs> so, uh, we, we were saying hello to David Pons. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very young... I, I was now giving some interview for uh, Balear Television and uh, they were asking why, why do we have this uh, successful tournament here? And I said, well, I think there are three factors. One is uh, we have an organizing team of very young people. Mm -hmm. They are very committed to the tournament, very motivated, very clever. They are doing a good job. Secondly, we have this island of Menorca. I mean, it's fantastic. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Everybody wants to come here. And uh, third, but not the less important, we have chess. And chess is uh, in a great moment, you know, in all fields. And it's very, I mean, I'm very happy that uh, local authorities here are supporting this tournament, which I believe it can become one of the most uh, big open tournaments in, yeah. in Europe or even in, in the world, world. even in the world. world. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, only the third edition and we already mm -hmm. have uh, more than 50 grandmasters, uh, more than 50 countries play here mm -hmm. and a wonderful, wonderful event. Let's say hello to Brian Sandoval, to Xavier Montpel. This is the broadcast in English. Um, aquí no hablamos hoy español. Brian, <laughs> Brian no español hoy. This is the English broadcast. If you want to hear uh, the broadcast in Spanish, you can go to Divis Channel. TV, yeah. and he's doing the broadcast in Spanish. But uh, during the week, we'll be doing the broadcast in English. This is being broadcast on chess.com as well. Okay. So mm -hmm. apart from being on my channel, this is taken to chess.com mm -hmm. um, behind Nakamura. Excellent. So Excellent. that will be good for the promotion of the events as well. Yeah. So, what do, you, what do you think about this position here? Um, yeah, this I is think, uh, uh, this Volodymyr against uh, Valdepeñas, I think he's called. What do you think about this one? Yeah, well, I think white is much better. I mean, we have this uh, pawn 1 e6, which is uh, very weak, the square e5, and the uh, black pieces, the knight on d8 is very poor. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, the point is that it's never easy to win these positions. Easy. I mean, if, if white goes long castle, then maybe b5 before. Is going to come very fast, hmm. um, and if White goes short castle, then why did he put the uh, pawn on h5? I mean, yeah. it's but okay, he can mix strategies. He can play h6. And, would uh, you play h6 now? I think I'm I would play sure. h6. I, you, would You're you not know? sure. I'm not sure. I mean, because h6, g6, and then later maybe the knight come into f7, and uh, no. I'm not so happy about it. I mean, I believe the, there must be some g4 one day, but I don't know how. Ah, I mean, opening up the position. Or maybe knight five first, uh, maybe long castle and rookie one and knight five. Maybe b5 before is still too slow. No, I have, I'm sure white is going to win this game. Yeah, it's it's yeah, a very okay. good position, no? Yeah, it's a very good position and also he's uh, much stronger. I mean. I, I'm thinking that even if he long castles and you go b5, 
king b1 even if he goes b4 yeah you're right. i could even play c4 maybe here yeah you're right. and, and get this diagonal with the bishop yeah absolutely this is a very good position for yeah white. king b1 is very simple just get your king out of the yeah, way yeah there is one very famous uh, sentence from steinitz that uh, if you want to attack it's not enough that you want to attack. I mean, you need to have the right to attack. The right to attack. And with the knight on the eight, black has no right to start an yeah. attack. I mean, yeah. he's not in position to, to create any danger. So I especially probably. like this idea of playing g4 with the knight on e5, with the bishop protected, and long castle bring the rook over. Yeah, rook g1. And it, it's a very strong attack. And yeah, but he can, also, he can also play in the center with rook e1, knight e5, and, well, I mean, it will be difficult to to keep uh, e6 well protected. Uh, there are many, many ways. Uh, he will find out. I the, mean, these pieces here? Yeah. This Black, is not, not looking very good. Black doesn't have a real counterplay. I mean, Shiva says, Vishenand had a strong connection with Spain. Yeah. He lived here for many years. He was living in Madrid, no? Yeah, near Madrid, yeah, in uh, Collado Mediano. Collado so, Mediano. In the mountains, yeah. yeah, for many, many years. In fact, uh, he had a couple of... Uh, his uh, he said uh, like Spanish parents. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mauricio Pereira. Good uh, friends. Nieves Pereira. Yeah, <clears throat> it was a couple. Uh, they were old uh, they didn't, uh, and they were taking care of Vichy like a like a son. Yeah. And he was uh, well his best chess years. Uh, he was living in Spain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, look at this one. Here we have a grandmaster. According to the computer, the grandmaster is in trouble, Miguel. Maxime wow. Lagarde What's happening here? Wow. Let's take. Let's take stock of the position. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Two, four, six, seven. It looks like black is a pawn up. Yeah. Well, I mean, black, white, uh, probably he would like to have some compensation with a pair of bishops. But the bishop on b6 looks a bit misplaced. Uh, out of play, no? Yeah. If we could put it here on h6, things yeah. would be different. Yeah. And black has a, not only a pawn up, but also c3 is weak. Uh, black pieces are very active, so black is better. I There's think. no reason to think that black is, is worse. He's, there is no the computer says he's clearly better. Yeah, not enough compensation. So well, th this would be a, a big a big upset. I don't know this player. Stanley. I don't know who he is. Stanley. Probably a young player, candidate master. Yeah. yeah. Stanley. If he's young, then Maxim Lagarde okay. is in trouble. Badak Sony. That looks like a, that actually looks like a Hungarian. Uh, uh, maybe a Hungarian uh, surname. Although can, he is, can we have England. a look at the game? Then I will, yeah. I will tell you how good. Yeah. He, how I, good I would say it. this is some some uh, this uh, accelerated dragon or something, but I'm not sure. Let, let's see. Let's go. But if we have a fast look at the game, we can see why this. Okay. Okay. Started with the uh, King's Indian. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Some kind of English. Bobinic attack, I think yeah. it's called. No. Yeah. Yeah, but this is quite easy for Black in general. Ninety-eight, all this. Yeah, he's in doing 98. all the right Black. He's doing all the right things for the moment. Yes. And uh, now, okay, he allow it d4. Usually, you play knight d4. Knight d4 instead of rook b8. We stick the knight in here. Yeah, usually. To prevent this move. Yeah, this is hmm. kind of uh, standard. And then this one goes here to prepare b5 or to go here to play. Yeah, but he played rook b8, which b8. is probably also not so bad. I mean, d4. d4. Yeah. Okay. Take. 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 Here we have the... Still pretty equal, I think. Yeah, okay. it's normal. Castle. Okay. Correct. Here, black could maybe trade off a couple of pieces, which was an option. But yeah, he went here. Yeah, the bishop d7 is also all right. I mean, white is... a5. a5, aha. This I'm not so sure, because now the pawn can be attached here, but... Uh, black was uh, preparing knight takes d4 and some b5, so... Yeah. Um, one yeah, day. yeah, but I'm not so sure about this move a5, yeah. but still okay. It's still knight to e6, it's still pretty equal. Knight to b3, knight b3 it's a bit really weird. Knight to b3 is a usually weird, the no? knight should go to e2, no? Usually, this is a bit weird, yes. This yeah, I think so because the knight e2, uh, here. it's the most natural move, uh, connecting mm. knights, but maybe it's not working for some reason. Because maybe there's a tactic, ah, knight the takes a5, no? Okay. Oh, uh, the yeah, pawn. yeah, that's Th it. So this comes from before, then the yeah. a5 move was possibly weak. Probably a5, it's committing because white. There, there is a there is mm -hmm. attack now here, yeah. But knight on b3 is not very happy because it's a bit passive. And uh, black played knight on b5. Queen e2. Aha. Uh -huh. Rook c8. Yeah. And now black knight is... Knight d2. Mm -hmm. Black is... Wow. Uh -huh. Tactics, tactics time. Tactics time. Ah, oh, with the pin. Ah. That's what white missed. Do you think he yeah. missed this? For sure. Wow. Of course. 
Yeah, yeah. So probably White made a mistake before, but uh, because here already in C4, we can show to the public what happened. Yeah, but, but what to do now if not no, now it's already Maybe he missed it before and now it's too late. Yeah, probably. Take, and take, I, take on C3. And Bishop B5, yes, excellent. There was this intermediate move. Yeah. And now Bishop D B5. Yeah, nice, excellent. nice, 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 nice. Yeah. Nice, and now he gets the piece back. An extra pawn? Yeah, knight d6 is not working because pawn takes the 6 and later rook on f1 is yes. on a fall. Yes. So I don't know, white is clearly, he missed something and uh, now he's a uh, pawn down and his opponent seems to be a good player. I mean, so this can be already a yeah, uh, first... Uh, could be a difficult. Yeah. Also, if I'm not mistaken, if he takes on here, you could even take on here, I think. Yeah. Um, right. this yeah, yeah, that's right. Very you're different right. ways to it. Yeah. This is good as well. This yeah, is yeah, good. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, this well, is I mean, bad for... Bad for queen to e3. Yeah. Take with the rook. And it's up and up. An extra pawn. No no apparent compensation. I think he has to try something like this. But let's see how it goes. F45. Rook e1. Mm -hmm. Black play rook. This is decent. Yeah. H hitting the pawn on c3. And he's thinking now. Let's say white protects with... Let's say rook c1. Yeah. Just to give a move. How we, can you continue with black here? Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah. Okay, we're better, but what to do? It's not enough to be better, as you said before. We mm -hmm. need to have a plan. I would think of knight c5 d7, just to... Knight c5 d7? Because the knight ah. on e6 is really doing not so much, I mean. Okay. But if you bring the knight to d7, then we can... If We have to be careful of this move. This is the only move I have to be careful about. Yeah, but if knight c5, you're attacking oh, on e4. Oh, e4. So perfect, perfect. No time. This is a good but move. But I don't know. I'm not so sure. But it looks natural, I mean. And then to come here or even here, depending. Yeah, on. or even improve the queen, queen e6. Uh, queen e6. Or maybe, yeah. maybe bishop c6 to increase the pressure, pressure on, on e4. There are many ideas with the knight here. Miguel, yeah. do you think this advantage for black is enough to win against the grandmaster? Or, or do you think no, I White think still has to make another mistake? No, 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 this is completely winning. This is enough. Yeah, yeah. So you, if, black if you had Black in this position, you would be confident. No, not me. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, uh, play at your level. No, I mean, yes, no, this for Grandmaster level, it's completely winning. Another okay. question is, uh, is uh, to win it. Okay. Do, you think, mean, do you think White should offer a draw in this position? I is don't know, first of all, if... As uh, soon as possible, before <laughs> it gets worse for him. No, I don't know, I don't know. I, I think... Uh, uh, I, I, I'm not sure the draw offer is allowed. Uh, oh, we'd have to check this. Move, yeah, we'd have to check route, yeah. yeah, yeah. But yes, I, I think Black is doing fine. But you're right, he still needs to find some little moves here no. and there. This is not so easy to see this plan of knight. Yeah. Okay. Because you, you, might, you might think of other plans. Yeah, you might think that the knight is fine on e6 because it's on the center. But exactly. sometimes this is a bit tricky, you know. A piece mm. is doing nothing. Yeah, uh, Borahan told me this once. He told me many times, Michael, in a position where you're not sure what to do, mm -hmm. the solution is to reroute a knight, he said to me. Yeah. Funny, yeah. isn't it? It's true. In many, many positions. Mm -hmm. the, the positional solution is to get your knight and improve it some, somehow yeah. when you're stuck. So. But I think black needs to do something fast. Otherwise, white can play, as you said, a 4-5. Yeah. But you know this position, can you imagine that uh, we give a rook for the bishop on g2? Black is still very okay. Very, 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 very Because, very, very uh, I mean, the white bishop on b6 is going to be so stupid. In, can you imagine black plays in an endgame f6, king f7, rook c8? Uh, still would be better for black with one but pawn you know, only for the exchange, you know. I think this is a very good plan, but I think also that black might think that just playing queen to d7 and rook c8 and just put his pieces into position. Uh -huh. But he could play queen d7 immediately, he didn't. No, no because it's White's turn now. No, but oh, did he play this I mean, move? The, the last move was Queen to the not Queen d7, but Queen c8. That is true. So that is true. Probably he, for some reason, he doesn't like the Queen on d7, and uh, he has some other ideas. Yeah. I have the feeling that knight c5 is not so difficult. The only question is if White can play e5 or something like that. Oh, I'm not so sure. Straight away. Yeah, after knight c5, some move like e5, but maybe pawn takes e5, because uh, knight d3 is uh, jumping if. If queen yeah. takes e5, knight d3, so I think yeah. black is better here. Yeah, yeah. black is better. Uh, all but the there time. are some tactics, you have to be a bit yeah, careful. Yeah, some little things, but uh, black, no, mm. here, pawn takes, I, I think. I don't see any. So many friends in Spanish, yeah. when they listen to us in English, que raro hablan. <laughs> well, I mean, I was... Duccio, you need to learn to speak English. Yeah. My channel is for English during this week. Yeah. Because we're doing the Menorca tournament, and I'm bringing the commentary to my channel for all the English. 
people. <laughs> Menorca vuelve a manos británicas. <laughs> Yeah, um, we remind you that we have uh, Divis uh, commenting in Spanish. Divis is doing Spanish commentary if you yeah, want to listen I to Spanish. I want to now, now for... Uh, Miguel, for Miguel will be coming in and out. Yeah. And, and hopefully bring a, a player or two later on. Yeah, possible. That I wanted to offer you that if you want... I fantastic, someone, fantastic. Uh, I will try to check some games. Remember, if you're sitting here and the other player is here... Yeah. Okay, so normal, normal... Uh, okay. You always use this. This okay. is the stream. So you always do things here, okay, like excellent. like this. Yeah. And to change the game is very easy because you just choose the game here. Okay, excellent, thank you. And for instance, let's take uh, Irani, for example. Yeah. So you just put it in. Yeah. Okay. And also, you can click on here and see the notation. And if you want to see a very tactical position, you mm -hmm. want to check the lines. It's all, it's very it's, it's, and everything you do here. Yeah. Comes out there, and here you can read. You Excellent. can read the, the chats of the person, so... It's a good setup, yeah. The only problem is we don't have the camera, because when uh -huh. I put the camera in, it crashes. No, so but it's fine. I mean, I will tell you what's going on there. I mean, in general, everything was very quiet. I went there. I went for a walk before. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I did see the streamer's room is a bit crowded, packed. Yeah, it's a bit small, it's a bit yeah, for, for, yeah. yeah. It's, it's did you see in Sitges, how they hit it in Sitges? There was a bit, there was an, an area, yeah. but not so closed in. No? Yeah, yeah. But here they had to find a solution because uh, finally it was a uh, success was so high that the organizers uh, had a little headache how to arrange yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the playing hall because not so many so people Not, not so easy to find hotels in this area with space for lots of people. Yeah. Not so easy. Also, let's uh, remind that now it's out of season. I mean, this hotel was closed. Uh, it opened yesterday. And Especially uh, for the chess players. Yeah, and it will be closed after the tournament uh, till uh, there is uh, the high season. Yeah, to the high season. Starting... Yeah. At least uh, three or four weeks. Yeah. Uh, I, think it starts, then, yeah. I think it starts in, uh, in May. May, yeah. Uh, I think in, in Balearic Islands, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. We will be following okay. many games. I, I'm a very good friend of Kike Setien, you know, the oh, former, football, yeah. former yeah, yeah. coach of uh, Football Club Barcelona. Uh, he was playing with uh, Black against some international master from France. Wow. And uh, at the beginning he went, uh, he did very well, I mean, it was an Italian game, Kike played bishop e7 to stop knight g5, very clever move, the Hungarian defense. But no, we don't have this, um, this game in, in our uh, broadcast. This one's uh, becoming quite interesting. Yeah. So, Michal uh -huh. played the variation of uh, bishop takes f6, Yeah. This probably to get out of theory as well, yeah. confuse his opponent. Well, and and then went for the long castle. Yeah, b6 I don't like at all, you know. b6 no, is not so no, good. I, I don't like it. Hmm. I think uh, you, should, you should play c5. Try and get c5 in some Yeah, way, yeah, huh? yeah, more active. But okay, maybe it doesn't so bad. But bishop b7 already machine doesn't I, like it. I was know? thinking that this could be a plan in the future. Yes, I won't. But first he took here to stabilize the center yes. and to prevent this uh, attack. Of, of course. And now he, and and now now he starts the attack. Yeah. It's very well known, this line. Uh, no, this is to go here and back. Not but so good. No, doesn't know. I played this variation against uh, Juan Manuel Bellón, Grandmaster, ah. many years ago. And uh, theory, there is a lot of theory where Black uh, plays g6 and White goes g4, g5, take take Bishop g7, uh -huh. and then White uh, has the h file to attack, but it's not so easy. But you can't make the Bishop g7 holds. Yeah. Then you need more time, and uh, I I want some beautiful game. I was playing this with white, in fact. <laughs> but okay, what black played, bishop b7 and c8. It's As he can't play g4, he yeah. goes e4. e5, win immediately. Take. Take, take with already. the bishop, hitting yeah. the bishop. Computer doesn't like this move so much. Probably knight e4 was more natural. No? Natural and, and, and... Because maybe he was well. uh, he didn't like maybe knight d5. Maybe knight d5, yeah. yeah. But uh, then white probably can go knight e5, and uh, he's still much yeah. better. But okay. So he took with the bishop? Yeah, well, I mean, he's still better. Maybe not so Rook much, but... Uh, and uh, knight e5 now. Knight e5. If black captures, you take back with the pawn, and you open up the rook. Mm -hmm. So this would be very good. C5, C5 looks normal. Well, this looks a very important move. Because, okay, not so normal, because... <laughs> the rook is on the one. That I is mean, true. That is true. But uh, is I like the move because uh, it's, it's ambitious. Very ambitious. It's giving black uh, some life uh, yeah. after pawn takes. Uh, then he can play probably queen c7. So, Nihal is thinking, but if he takes the pawn, yeah, yeah, so he'll play queen this. Seven, and then suddenly the bishops are uh, the mm. bishop on f6 is very strong. It's clear that white uh, misplayed the position, right? He just uh, He's done something wrong. Rooms. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, He's the only question is that the game. he has one more hour. 
One more around the clock, yeah. yeah. But it's clear that now suddenly the black bishop on f6 is a monster. White doesn't have any attack. What to play with white here? f4 maybe? Yeah, not so easy now. Any uh, anymore? I mean, very difficult now. f4 maybe, but pawn takes d4. Pawn takes pawn, knight to b5. But it's a bit worrying to have yeah, the this queen is and very, the king. Very the dangerous, you know. Very dangerous. Very I dangerous. I think black can be better at uh, any moment. Uh, probably already better, no? For black. So. What is the computer offering for uh, white? It says that the position is slightly better for black. Yeah, and that's mm. amazing because uh, black was playing bishop b7, bishop c8. Nihal must be thinking, okay, what what's going on? I what mean, has he done wrong? No? You know, sometimes when your opponent plays uh, very badly. You already, uh, in your brain, you already won the game. Very dangerous. Yeah, and this very mentality, okay, you like uh, relax, you know, okay, you know, this opponent is very weak, bishop b7, bishop c8, but he, he doesn't have any idea. Yeah. But suddenly he can find a move like c5, and everything is completely <laughs> very, <laughs> very dangerous, very dangerous, yeah. very dangerous. Now the position is... Michalis, you know, but the player he likes to play blitz, uh, like mm. blitz and rapid. Yeah. Maybe he's play, play, playing too fast, or...? Yeah, probably. I think he got uh, overconfident. Overconfident, because yeah. it's a good position. Yeah. Because bishop b7, bishop c8, what is this? It looks like a joke, you know. If you go back to the position, in fact, I don't know why he played e4. Well, I, 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 I would not play e4 here. No, he this went... Was in this position, he went... Uh, no, this is correct, h4. And here, uh, why to play e4, I mean... Why play e4? Keep keep this the structure. But we can't go g4. Maybe, maybe to put a rook on g1, maybe. Yeah, why not push? Yeah, rook g1 to play g4, why not? That makes sense, yeah. I don't know, I mean, c5 is coming, but okay, I don't really care, I mean... Uh, How much time do you use here? e4? e4... Uh, I think this is the time. Yeah. 30 seconds. He played very fast e4. Practically, yeah, practically without thinking. Yeah, but what, can you offer rook g1 but to... But this is a strange move. Well, maybe this is the problem because rook b8 and now c5. Yeah, this is true. He, he did this with the idea of playing knight to e5, but this doesn't work. Yeah. This this seems much more normal. Yeah. And, no, and against this, this is better for white. But uh, how to play now? Take uh, take a knight e5. What you but said. I don't before. like. No, but I don't like uh, the way white is playing. I think white is uh, spoiling a very promising position. Mm -hmm. Michael, go back. Go back. No, you don't like this. <laughs> no, I don't like the way no. white is playing. Don't play e4. No e4. No, play rook g1. Rook g1. Play my play. move. Rook d d g1. Yeah. yeah. Rook d g1. I want just to mate. Yeah. G4. Black can do this, but this is very compromised. If you do this, yeah. Yeah. then you'll have other type of problems. Yes. So let's say he plays c5. Okay, then we go. And now we go g4? We go g4, let's go g4. anyway, yeah, let's go. Uh, and this is very strong, yeah. He should have done this. Yeah, this looks very yeah. strong. I mean, yeah. black pieces that don't have a play, the knight on e7 is poorly placed, the bishop on f6. Look, what you, said be what, what you said before. Yeah, this is typical, this, but this okay, position. then okay, we take, take, and later we will and be... now we play this position. Yeah, we will be slowly mating uh, the opponent. I mean, we will double rooks, we will later put rook h7 to sacrifice, or 95 f4. There are many ways to play this yeah. position. Black is uh, really in trouble here. I mean, this is much better for white. This looks very good, yeah, and yeah. stable. Yeah, even without, yeah, bishop d3 was possible, maybe also was possible bishop e2, you know. Yeah, the, the plan is to play g4 and go for the attack, not e4. What is this e4? This is strange because Nihal is a very good player. You know, but these young players, sometimes, they are very strong in some tactical uh, openings, calculation, and strategi strategically, they can they still make some mistakes. I saw, yeah. I saw many, many cases where they misunderstand the position, you know, they... I would never play e4 here, yeah. because I don't want to open the game for the bishop, mm. so, and I don't want to make happy this bishop on f6, but he thought, okay, e4 is the move. I don't know, I mean, it's. I think sometimes they lack some deep strategy. Well, they try to do everything with calculation, and sometimes if you miss a move, yeah. then you're going against uh, your, your intuition, you're using calculation instead of just using intuition, no? Yeah. To keep the, the, the I mean, if close. you want to attack on the, on the king side, you, want you, should, the you should keep the we center We know this, close. we know this, of course. We so if this. you open the center, it's because you are going to win the battle on the center. In the center, which but is not how the case. And the other player has the bishop player. It's a bit strange. Yeah. Maybe he weird. missed c5. It's and a bit uh, maybe one question is, if black doesn't play c5, is he lost? If he doesn't play c5. If he doesn't uh -huh. play c5, are there any other moves? What is the computer offering? Because this what would explain... This would explain... But still not so clear. Yeah, I was thinking okay, queen, some other moves. Queen e8, I would think rook h1 is nice for me. 
Yeah. But other words, bishop, bishop to b7, for example, this would be a... No, bishop b7, no. no. no you don't want to trade. This is what white wants. Th this is what I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, this it, is white is better. No, this, this is position? Is yeah, no, this, this is, is good better. for white. Yeah, because no pair of bishops. So probably he miscalculated c5? Probably. Didn't see the idea of queen c7? And yeah. if not, then, then black is... Then white is more or less okay. Yeah, maybe he thought that here he's going to play after knight d5. He thought my next moves a 4 g4, g5, and mate. Yes. This is what he A bit did. like the character. He thought, yeah. like, I'm winning here, f4, g4, and suddenly black has some counterplay with yeah. the move c5. Because even if you play queen e8, next move you have to play c5. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> because yeah, otherwise yeah, white is yeah. going to, to attack on the maybe, king side. Maybe and, uh, he thought of these type of positions. Yeah. And look, and no, I maybe, maybe he, already g5. Yeah, and maybe he's in time over here. Yeah, yeah. But okay, probably he would still win because he, he has 500 elo points more than yeah. his opponent. Uh, the game was c5, knight b5, and the position is very unclear. I mean, already came a mistake. So, yeah. oh, a natural move, though. No, of course, he's going to win anyway. What did he should play? According to the competition, bishop, bishop d7, d7, which is not an easy move. Not an easy move at all. At yeah, all, bishop d7. You're, you're, you're pinning yourself straight away, no? Yeah. In fact, I mean, what Nihal played, uh, if we check it with the computer, uh, we can feel that he's playing badly, but maybe from a human point of view... It's not, it doesn't look so bad. Probably yeah. not so bad, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I start to understand that he, what he, he saw that, okay, I'm playing normal, I mean... But maybe I mean, he yeah. did miss this idea. Maybe he did miss this. Some moves yeah, back. This looks okay for black. This, this maybe maybe he missed this a uh, few moves back. Because when he got here, he had to start to think yeah. Yeah, and, fi and find a solution. Well, yeah. but but he, he, he played the best move. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, excellent. Okay, Michael, I will go for a walk to check the playing hall. See you in a while. If somebody finishes his game and it's an interesting game, I will bring him here. Bring yeah. him here and we can check the game with uh, the player, which is always uh, good. Yes, I will also pay a visit to my friend Divis to see how what's going on okay, there. Okay. So we will have some uh, week of uh, chess, morning and afternoon. We morning and afternoon, so it's um, 10 o'clock in the morning yeah. and uh, 4.30 in the afternoon from tomorrow onwards. Yeah. A lot of chess and good okay, chess for Menorca. Okay, thank you, Michael. See you in a while. See you later. Miguel Iescas. This is my word, well, yeah? I think um, that's my yeah, idea. take the other one if you want. No, yeah. this is fine. Miguel Iescas, Spain's best player for many, many years. Uh, a legend, a player. Now he's retired as a chess player. He does still commentary, books, courses, openings. But uh, yeah, I mean, talking to Miguel, you can see why he played at such a high level during so many years, playing with Carpo 50. 15 times against Karpov, I mean, that's unbelievable. So let's hope to have him back uh, soon in a while. And meanwhile, we are going to take our small second break. But first, I want to see how the stream is going. So I'm going to open up a window and see if I'm lucky. I can see how the stream is going without, without spoiling the position on the board. I'm going to put another of the games I'm going to put another of the games let's see if I can put live here okay so we're live here yep yeah it doesn't seem to be lagging much which is good okay here we go Okay, seems to be working well, which is very good. And hopefully we'll get a, a bit of exposure also on the chess.com channel when there's no other activities. I can see that there's a sub battle going on now. So hopefully at some point we'll be lucky and we'll get some players there as well. Okay, so I'm going to take my small five to eight minute second break. And we'll be back very, very soon. What I'm going to do is add some text. Ah, it doesn't allow me to add some text here. Uh, so the broadcast has been blocked. Yeah, this is a bit tricky. I can see that when I put the camera on, the broadcast is blocked. So for the moment, we'll take another small break and we'll be back in a second.
I'm back with the coffee and milk. So, how's it going, my friends? Clara, Rachel, Timando, Aldivis, Jose Reverias, good afternoon, Jorge Navarrete. Okay, so for those of you who've just arrived, please remember that this week I'm doing the broadcast in English. We're doing the Menorca International in English language with the commentaries. And if you want to listen in Spanish, Divis is doing the commentary on his channel. Um, so you're served both in English and in Spanish. So we had Miguel Iescas a while back. He gave us some very interesting commentaries on the different uh, games that we we're watching. And games are progressing. So let's go back to the game by Nihal. This is the one we were looking at before. Here we are. Some moves have been made. Let's try to understand what's happening here. And now, it does seem that um, White has recovered the initiative because if Black had captured the Knight, I think that capturing on e6 would be very strong, hitting the Queen and also hitting the Rook on f8. So this would be basically winning for, for White. So black played queen c8, getting the queen out of the way. A very decent move. Knight takes e6, queen takes e6, knight d7. This is a double attack. And the thing is, how does black avoid losing a rook in this position? The only way would be trying to put a rook on c8. But if you put the rook of b, Maybe, maybe, I have to calculate this properly, but maybe white can go capture here. Let's see this variation. Capture, capture, check, king here, and capture. How would this look? This is a long variation. Long variation, wrong variation. It's dangerous always. What is happening here? White has next to exchange for a pawn. I think he should be better. Maybe just to play rook to d2, or even maybe ambitiously go here. White should be winning in this position. So let's go back. So it's actually quite difficult to prevent this uh, attack here. Yeah, not easy at all. And if he plays the other rook, how would this go now? Ah, fantastic trick, guys. Look at this. Knight takes rook. Rook takes queen. And rook to d8, mate. Yeah, this is a nice trick. Very nice trick. So Nihal has this trick up his sleeve to pounce on Xavier if he makes a mistake in this position. Okay, so it looks like Nihal is going to win this game. So let's go and see another game. Um, we were looking at Bolat against Fedosev some time ago. We left it in this position here in the French. Let's see how this has evolved. Right to b6, a4. Remember I mentioned this plan is one of the objectives of uh, white in this position. Here he goes. The thing is, this pawn can also prove to be very weak. So, white sacrifices the pawn. And probably wants to go for the attack. Somehow. But a pawn is a pawn. Rook to b1. This computer says this is bad, this move. Hmm. Why is this move so bad? What should white to play here? What should white play here? Something on the king's side. Maybe we split h5. Probing here. Probing the weaknesses. Trying to provoke g6. Then we have some black squares to, to work our way around. Yeah. Maybe g3. Because when the knight goes to c6, threatening b4, black is going to hit the knight on h4. Which is what happened in the game. Rook b1, bad move. Knight to c6, attacking the knight. 
but also threatening knight takes c3 and beef yeah this is a very strong move so feather cf could easily be winning now take take and b4 what's a nice combination by feather cf if he, if he gets this in very nice combination very nice Okay, so tell me which game you'd like to see in the chat. Whatever you want to see, I can I can see it for you. And uh, salutations to everyone who's coming in from chess.com. Hello to all my friends there. We are doing the commentary in English of the first round of the Menorca Chess Festival. We've had an unfortunate forfeit of Nieman, Hans Nieman. Who just won the Grinky tournament? He decided not to appear. Uh, reasons are still unclear. Hopefully, we'll get some more information for tomorrow. But uh, yeah, he didn't come to play, and that's been a big, a big uh, shock for the tournament organizers. We have 24 boards being relayed with uh, 24 top grandmasters and four boards where we have our for streamers doing their thing and giving, uh, getting attention. We have a lot of grandmasters, international masters, very strong uh, intermediate players. Things and from tomorrow onwards, we're going to have very strong games being played. So let's keep it up, and hopefully. We're going to have some very, very good games. Top games. Top games we're going to have. Okay, let's drop back and see how power was going with Alexienko. We were looking at this game with Miguel. Could you just confirm you hear me properly? Because, yes, yes, yes. Are you hearing me properly? It does seem that something's happened to the broadcast. I wouldn't want to be doing commentary with no one hearing. So if someone could be so kind to tell me if he hears me properly, that I would really very much appreciate that. Yeah, great. Anna Lovic, hello, Dimitra. It's nice to nice to see you in the chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you a lot. It's good to know you're there listening to me. Thank you very much. Yes, we can check board thirteen, Anna. We'll see this game first and then go to board thirteen. Um, and let's confirm the players you want to see on board thirteen are Daniel Dada from Belgium, very strong grandmaster. Playing with White against Christopher Tulin. Just confirm to me in the chat that's the game you want to see. And we'll go there immediately after we've looked at this game. So we left this game before and we were considering Queen to H6. A different approach by Kirill hitting the pawn on uh, G on E7. E5 seems to be a reasonable move. Knight to B3. Now, as you can see, the Knight on D7 does have to guard to guard the pawn on b6. So that's a small problem for for power. Rook d8, sensible. Rook d1, again, another sensible move. This move might be to play bishop to f8 at some point. a5. This is a probably a good move, but risky. Risky. Board number 14. Ah. Board number 14 would be Anirud Chatterjee against Maxim Chigaev. I'm suspecting... Uh, your son is Anirut Tatterji. We'll check it right now. Okay, Anna, just give me a second and we'll we'll check it right now. No problem. So as I was saying, this is a very um, risky move because according to the computer, it's okay. But we are dropping the square B5. And if a knight lands there, it can be very dangerous. But uh, Marine understands that he has to push the queen away. So there's an offer exchange of queens. Power decides to keep the queens on the board. 
maybe to go queen to b7 afterwards. Bishop d5 hitting the rook. Rook c8. Queen h4. Some maneuvers here. Power is playing very sensibly. Knight f8. Recycling the queen to here. The, the knight. And this is the position. I think Power has a very decent position. Very decent position. I'm not quite sure if he's better. But I would never say he's worse here. And also the pawn on a4 could be a problem in a while. Okay, let's see if we can find this game for Anna. His name is Rafael Adam from Canada. Let's check. Okay, he's on board. 15 against Kartik Venkataram. Whoa, tough opponent, a tough nut to crack. Okay, let's go to board 15 and see if we can check out the game of the son of Anna. Raphael Adam from Canada, where the candidates will be held very soon. Here we go. Okay, so this is the game. Kartik, 2609, 56 minutes left. And Raphael Adam, 2180 from Canada, 20 minutes left. Okay, let's quickly browse through the game, see if anything. Okay, this is a standard position of the hedgehog. Knight takes d4 is the other option, but stronger players normally touch with the queen to prevent the exchange of bishops. This is the variation that Magnus Carlsen uses. He normally plays bishop to g5, swaps up the knight, and tries and go, try goes for the pawn on d6. Okay, standard play. Knight to c5, the pawn was attacked. e5, okay, pawn takes pawn, queen takes pawn, rook to c8, Raphael doesn't mind the exchange of queens, but it has to be on his terms, take, take, bishop c1, rerouting the bishop to f4, very sensible, knight e4, hits the rook, goes back, take, take, bishop e3, both players are playing very well, Hitting the rook on a1, bishop d4, king e7, knight e5, take, take. I think black is very close to equality here. Yeah, the only problem he's had, Anna, your son has a very decent position. Very, very near equality. Equal material, equal piece distribution. The only problem is he's low on time. There are still many moves to go to the end of the game. Kartik is a very experienced player, but objectively, he's fine. What he should try to do is exchange the two rooks. If he was able to exchange the four rooks, the game would probably go to a draw. As he is low on time, it all depends on his level of play low on time. We'll see. If you know him properly, if he normally plays well when he's low on time, you shouldn't be too worried. If, on the other hand, he blunders when he plays low on time, then it's still a tricky position. Not the most tricky position. Um, White will play king to f3. And once his king is on f3, maybe double rooks. Or maybe advance on the queen, queen king side winning space. And black should try and exchange a couple of pieces. It's key for him to exchange pieces. The thing is how to exchange pieces here. Not so easy. Maybe knight to d7. Maybe knight to d7. Could be an idea. Maybe we could exchange the bishop. Let's see if this is possible or not. Here we could play knight to d3. This would be okay. Or f6 first. But let's say he takes with the pawn. Yeah, this is to my liking. He takes with the pawn, we have rook to d7, and then double rooks. This is okay for black. He would take with the bishop. And now, if we play knight to d3, white can capture the pawn on g7. So first we have to play f6. Bishop to c3. Now I'm wondering, if we exchange the two rooks here, can we get a draw here with black? It's hard to say. 
I'd say that this position is still slightly better for white, this ending. So the kids should, should try and avoid this, this ending, bishop against knight, with the pawns on the, both sides of the board, because this is better for white, and a grandmaster could really take black into deep waters here. It's a difficult end, ending to defend. Kartik defeated Magnus in the Katan Masters, says Shiva. He's pretty solid. So, let's see how this game goes, yeah? Okay, Anna, if you want, we can come back here in a while and see if they got to this position or not. Yeah, let's choose another game. Oh, so the game we saw before, I, I asked Miguel, should White offer a draw in this position? Look, he did. He offered a draw. So they got here. He took the pawn, and at some point he offered a draw here. He's clearly worse, but the player with black and 400 points less decided to accept the draw and, uh, and not complicate his, uh, his position. He does have an extra pawn and a very good position, so it's, uh, it was a bad decision to take the draw. But then again, who are we to determine what is correct and what not is correct? Rook e4, queen g5. He didn't want to play this position. Although objectively, black is completely fine. And you can't really see much compensation for the pawn. The thing is, the draw offer is there. And if you say no and then you lose, you'll want to have accepted the draw offer. So it's never easy. Never easy. I've been in that position myself many times. As an international master, I've played against many grandmasters. I've had very good positions. They've offered a draw. Sometimes I've said yes, when I should have carried on. Sometimes I've said no and then lost the game. Very tricky. Normally when a grandmaster offers a draw, you have a good position. Because if not, he wouldn't offer you the draw. The thing is, if you can find the way to try and win. It's funny because I went, I went to get a coffee and on the way to the bar, to the coffee bar, I saw Lagarde run, walk very fast, with a very, very bad face. And I thought, maybe he's going to the toilets, or maybe he's finished. And of course he'd finished with the draw. So he was going back to his apartment to try and see where he went, where he went, where he went wrong. Okay, so let's see more games. I'm going to try and pick up games where one of the two players are already better. <laughs> Trying to find interesting games. Aha, this one looks interesting. This one looks very interesting. White may be near to a victory in this position. Idani Poya, Poya from Iran against Spaniards Daniel Molina. Okay, so what to do here? I see several very interesting moves, but there are some tricks still in this position. Check out this trick. Bishop to e4, I think c7 is the best move. This is the move I think I would do and push these pawns up. But bishop to e4 seems very good. And look at this trick. Check this one out. Pawn takes pawn. Bishop takes pawn. Rook to b8. Check. And now, if we try and keep our rook on the 8th rank to capture the bishop, we'll be faced by a mate on the 8th rank here. So, obviously, both players will see this mate and not fall into this trap. But it goes to show that sometimes you have to be a bit careful. Anything can happen if you make some sort of mistake. I think he should just play c7. And there's a lot of material advantage. We don't even have to recover this pawn. If he tries to defend it, these two pawns run down the board. And now we're going route to e7 then d7, 
bishop to a4. This is completely lost. So this looks like a win for Idani. My friend Eduard Aymeric has quite a good position against Max Warmerdam. Warmerdam is a grandmaster with 2600, a very strong player. Whereas Eduard is 2100, it's a 2200 candid master level player. And the computer does offer him a small advantage, but there are many pieces on the board, so anything that happens still. But uh, yeah, I look at the position. And I quite like White's position here. Black is attacking the board on e3. This could be a problem. But on the other hand, White does have this lovely long diagonal. So as long as there's no tactics on the pawn on e3, things will be very good for, for White. I wonder if the move is just to play knight to d1, protect the pawn, Transfer the bishop to d4. Let me see this move if this is possible. It's a bit passive, not what not a move I really want to do, but it does serve the the idea of protecting. Take, take. Oh, this looks okay. Actually, it looks quite okay. Mm. Yep, quite okay, Jose. Hoy hacemos retransmisión en inglés toda la semana con el torneo internacional. No Spanish broadcast this week. This week I've been signed up by the Menorca International to do the broadcast in English. If you want to listen to the broadcast in Spanish, you can go to El Divis TV and see our friend David Martinez next to uh, he's on the the door next to me here and behind us we have all the 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 players. So the broadcast will be uh, in English this week, okay? And every now and then Miguel Iescas will come. Hopefully we can bring some title players as well and you can get an insight into well, the way they play. But Jose, thanks for coming along, okay? Muchas gracias por estar aquí. Okay, so Shiva says that Nihal Sarin seems to be in a winning position, okay? Let's go and see our friend Nihal. Okay, wow. So, queen c8, take, take, knight d7. We, we stopped here. I was thinking knight takes f8 here. Queen d3, rook e8. Rook d8 is not so good because we take with check and then we capture the rook. So, queen e, rook e8, rook e1. Now we're threatening bishop to h7 check and the queen is hanging. So queen to c4. Yeah, I would, I'd be very, very surprised if he doesn't take the the bishop on f6, breaking up the pawn structure. The game is about to finish. Can we have in the commentary room? Hopefully, Rashid. Hopefully, um, Miguel is trying to find the players that finish and bring them along to do the commentary. So hopefully, we'll get Nihal in, but he still has to finish off the game. He has more than an hour. Now, how to finish off this game? He can take on f6, exchange queens, check on h7, several moves. Which is the most logical move here? Go to the ending. Let's see what happens if he goes to the ending. Okay, he's better here, but this is not the best way to win the game. There'd still be a lot of game in this position, only plus one according to the computer. So we need something more stronger. Okay, we could take and not exchange queens, maybe queen to f3, hitting this pawn.
king to g7. Rook to d7. White is better, but I can't see a way of finishing off. So there might still be something even better than this. So I, I would definitely take white in this position. But the position seems even better than that. I thought of check as well first. And now to take. But now it's not check. And black can take on d3 intermediate move. Okay, let's say he does this. Takes the bishop out, maybe to f d3, maybe f5. Threatening bishop to d7. This could be the idea. Yeah, this could be the idea. How can black survive the threat bishop to d7? Can he sacrifice the piece and then pin on the other way around? Well, this would be very weird. This is the cross pin. This is called a cross pin. You can see it's on like a cross. Now this would be unbelievable. If he does a cross pin here, this would be unbelievable. Because it's a sort of zugzwang position. Uh, white has an extra piece, but he can't move the bishop. So it's a cross pin. Black threatens king to f8. This would be a really cool position to, to play. I wonder if Nihal will see this. Okay, well he's still thinking. So we'll leave the position as it is now. Ah, I think he took. Well, are these are these my analysis? Yeah. Well, he didn't do the best the best option. Maybe he didn't see the cross spin in the end. Okay, let's choose another game. I'm checking the games, looking for interesting ones. Ooh. Something happened in the game of Anna's son. What happened here? We left it here. Ah, rook to d6. Not such a good move. He wants to double rooks. But this is a weird square to put the, the, the rook. Take. Oh, no, this is not possible. This must be a broadcast mistake. No, no, I, I, don't, I don't believe that this is like this. Anna, I'd be very surprised that your son played rook to c6. I, I would say this is rook takes c5, and they're playing this position. I'd, I'd, I'd suggest this is the position, yeah? I, I, I wouldn't think that this move has been played. This looks more like a broadcast mistake. Uh, sometimes you take a piece, for some reason the rook uh, clicks on the square before, and the move is wrongly broadcasted. So, no, this move just doesn't make any sense at all. Let's look for other games. So today, basically, we're talking about um, strong players against weaker players. And tomorrow, we'll start getting the games of grandmasters playing against each other. We checked this game a while ago. Both Miguel and myself, we considered this position to be very good for white. Let's see how Volodar played it. We were thinking of Long Castle, maybe to prepare g4. He Long Castled. 
king b1. Here I suggested against b4 to play c4. I thought this would be good for white. Or at least playable. Maybe we could even capture the pawn. Okay, so black played knight to f7 with the idea of maybe bringing the knight to e4. Rook e1. And here we are. Now it doesn't look that Volodar Vo Murzin still has a very good position, but uh, you can't really see nothing concrete to finish the game off. What should I do with black here? Knight to d6 maybe. But then knight to e5 is strong. Maybe some prophylactic move such as king to h8 or maybe rook to c8. So many different moves here. A difficult position to play with black, very difficult. So, Sri Devi Fragnavan asks uh, analysis on the game between Hebar Ejan and Grandmaster Pichot on the move bishop to d7. Let's go and check this position of Pichot and try and give some analysis. Okay, so this is the position. you're asking analysis on bishop bd i can't see what you put here bishop to d7 hmm but there is no bishop to d7 so what exactly are we talking about here Board seven, yeah, we have the position on the board. Eshan Hebar playing with white pieces, candidate master, black pieces, grandmaster, Alan Pichot. Isolated pawn. White has tried to attack on the king on the king's side, but there's not really a way of getting through there. And on the other hand, the d4 pawn is still very weak. Now I'd have to give my I have to give my money to black in this position. I think black can uh, exchange rooks at the precise moment and then try and knock off the pawn on on d4. Yeah, black is uh, black is is better here. Oh, board seven, not bishop to d7. Sorry about that. Board seven, Sri Devi. I thought you meant uh, bishop to d7. Okay, the game is open still. Uh, I mean, uh, all the pieces are on the board, but I have to be honest. I would say that uh, black's position is slightly favorable. So the thing is, the position is equal on pieces and pawns, but the pawn on d4 is what we call an isolated pawn. It doesn't have any pawns to protect it. And therefore, it can become a weakness, and sometimes you could even lose the pawn. Now, normally when we have an isolated pawn, what we want to do is to try to attack the other player and try and checkmate him before he can capture our isolated pawn. And this is not really happening on the board. So I have to go with black here. Not by much, but I still go with black. Ah, Salim won. So, quite a surprising resign. Okay, he resigned here. So the other player didn't see the cross pin. Ah, unfortunate. Unfortunate, because as we saw before, there was the option of trying to find the cross pin here. Uh, it's a pity. So let's see if Miguel can bring in Nikhal Sarin. Or I'll ask for him if possible. Let me send the WhatsApp. Okay, so I've, I've asked for Nihal, and uh, we'll see if they can bring they can bring him here. It would be cool. And Nihal is a very nice person, and he he he. It would be really great to see his analysis of the game. 
and see what he was thinking during the game. So let's hope they can bring Nihal. Meanwhile, we'll scroll over some other boards. Eddie Geisy slowly but surely seems to be getting the upper hand here with his two bishops and with his magnificent rook on d3. There's still a lot, a lot to be, a lot to be done here to win, but he seems to be going into the good, the, be, the, the good direction, I would say. Fedosev, we already said before that his position is very, very good. But there must be something wrong with the board because ah, so he took the bishop, the la last tried to an attack. Too, too, too much material here. This is uh, a French defense, which has worked very well for, for black. Uh, black is, uh, white is just trying to, to do his last chances for the attack, but there's gonna, nothing's gonna happen here. Okay. Power's doing very well. If power can win this game, this would be fantastic. Look how he's placing his pieces very well placed. The thing is, he can't make not even one mistake because uh, Kirill will pounce on him if he makes a mistake. But objectively speaking, he has a very good position here. I think he, he, he Paul could get a draw in this position. I'm checking the other positions. On. What about this position here? I wonder if White could receive a checkmate with the king on the on, on the rim also he has an extra piece but uh, yeah white is fighting his last chances for to try and do some perpetual do some sort of uh, perpetual check but it's very difficult his rook is hit now he has to move his rook out of the way maybe rook to f2 or even rook to f5 rook to f5 seems decent he does threaten the mate on h5 here yeah, this looks good for black so Chigaev uh, unsurprisingly should be winning the first game with the black pieces this is another interesting position on board 16 between Grandmaster uh, Carlos Daniel Albornoz Cabrera and uh, Rainis Pikins I think it's from Letonia. Let me check the flag. From Latvia, yeah, from Letonia. So, all the pieces are on the board, but clearly white is going for the attack. Uh, typically in this position, first of all, we go and exchange the bishop to weaken the dark squares, and then we would try and get in with the queen, and probably with a sacrifice of a piece. But I'm wondering, I'm wondering if he could actually sacrifice the knight here, and then go bishop to h6. I'm wondering if this would be possible. No, he went bishop to h6 straight away. This is the, the standard the standard move. You exchange the black bishop, go in with your queen, and then sacrifice a knight to bring in the rest of your pieces. This is going to be winning very, very soon for Carlos Daniel with the white pieces. Okay, let's see if they're going to bring me Nihal.
No luck, yes, but we're trying, we're trying. Okay, let's hope for a bit of luck. And Nika can come over here. Let's check the other games. Let's see what's happening here. Yeah, bishop takes, king takes, and maybe queen to g5. Hmm, this looks good. Imagine, guys, that I take here and bring the queen here. The threatened knight take, knight takes pawn check. Now, how does black defend against that? Tremendously difficult to defend against this check. Very, very difficult. I don't see a good solution. If he plays the king to h7, we can take with the knight, or even with the queen, because the bishop is pinning the pawn to the queen. And this is game over. What about if he goes here to f8? In this case, we need to use other techniques. What's the way here, Michael? What is the way here? What is the way? What is the way here? I'm seeing very, very nice variations. I'm seeing some very cool variations. This one is very nice. Let's see if it works. Knight to e4. Take. Check. And rook d1. With the idea to mate here. You know, the computer's finding defenses for black, so this is obviously not going to work. But of course, I don't have to sacrifice the knight. Against this move here, I can play check. I can do other moves as well. Knight h4 is possible. But this might be the best defense for for black, now that I'm thinking. This could be the best defense for black. Okay, so we'll see what's going to happen here. Let uh, Albornoz ponder. He captured the bishops. He played queen to d5. No, this is, this is my analysis of the real game. Wow. He played king to h7. This was a big blunder. Oof. Huge blunder. But this can't be possible. I don't believe he played this move. It doesn't make sense to allow knight to h5. Uh, I'm, I'm going to suppose this might be a blunder. Or some sort of broadcast mistake. Okay, let's see if we can get other moves. Board 14 is blocked. Now he has to take with the king. And the pawn on... No, but this can't be possible, an extra rook. This is also a board which is uh, broken down. So they ha we're having some broadcasting problems. Oh, this is an interesting game. Manuel Ermachenko against Daniel Yufa. Very unbalanced. Let me... Check the position for a moment, take stock of what's happening. Equal material. I wonder why he can't take the bishop on on f4. Could it be because we play rook takes e3? Let's see. Take. Ah, because of knight takes b7. Ah. This could be a problem, yes. This could be a problem. And then we promote the queen afterwards. Yes, this would be a problem. So here, here, threatening this check could be a problem as well. So, good position for Emachenko. Pressing in his game. Let's see how this one turns out. Gabriel Perez, also with a slightly better position against Rinat Jumabaev. Quite a decent ending with white. Very good chance of getting a draw in this position for white, actually. Could easily get a draw here if he plays well. The time situation is a bit worrying. Four minutes against 39. This means that if there's some tactics in the position, then... Uh, 
White will be in time trouble. He won't have enough time to, to pull through. So problems for, for time there. Some of the boards are just not working. Okay, Eddie Geisy should be winning now. Look at those pawns, how they're advancing. Very nice. Threatening F3. Okay, he blocks with the pawn. Now we have to find the, the best way of winning this. What's the way, best way of winning this with black? I think we can maybe capture here. Capture here. Big trouble, yes? And now king to g5. And this knight is about to, to be lost. So Eddie Geisy should be winning very, very soon, very soon. Let's see if we get any news from our... No news at all. Oh. We're being quite unlucky with the analysis. So Eddie Geisy is going to win. For sure, against Eugene Robbers. Looking at looking at the screen and the papers, I would say that tomorrow most of the favourites are going to win their games today. So tomorrow we will have about 130 players with with two points, with one point. So the cut will be around board 65. So tomorrow, already we will have grandmasters playing against other grandmasters or international masters. This will be very interesting. Tomorrow we will have players like Kirk, Gazarian, Rajat Makar, Guy Levin. These are 2400 IMs playing on board one, two, three, four, five. Very interesting. So tomorrow we'll have tough games on all the top boards, which will be very cool. Okay, so Eddie Guys is winning. Sain has won. Fedosiev is going to win. This is clear. We knew this from before. Van Forest won by forfeit. This one was interesting. <laughs> Equal position according to the computer. But uh, again, the weaker player, low on time. And with an, an, a pawn down. He does have some com compensation, but uh, it's positional compensation. That's very difficult to impose when you're a pawn down against a 2600 player. So I'm gonna give my, my odds here to, to Aravind to take this one down. And Pau, how is he doing? Time trouble looming, but 30 minutes against 12. So he's on the better side of time trouble. Oh, he's playing very nice, very nice. Very nice. Oh, he's giving up the rook now. Oh, very nice. Very nice. 30 minutes, a good position. Outplaying the Grandmaster with ease very nice so let's say he takes the rook which is the main move now i suppose that he will go in with the knights to d6 making his own threat okay we have to move the queen here now what will Powell play here this is the key the key position will he play rook takes d1 or will he play bishop to c4 What will he play here? Oh, power's played. Let's check. Yeah, he captured the rook. Okay, so we're we're on track. 
Now what to play here? Rook takes d1 and play an exchange down but with some compensation, meager compensation, or the more active bishop to c4, threatening f7, and now black would defend with rook to f8. Rook to d1. Mm, this is not easy. Not easy at all. White's pieces are very, very active in this position. Very active. And there are some threats. Uh, computer says the white's better. The, bla the black is better. But this is not easy at all to play with. But okay, let's just trust the pow. We'll, we'll find interesting ways of uh, putting pressure and maybe doing a comeback. So we'll get back to this game in a while. Okay, Fiddle Shift 1 finally. Pichot. This is the game with the isolated pawn. Yeah, Pichot is getting the upper hand in this game already. He's blocked the pawn on d4 perfectly with the knight. Queen e7. Wants to play knight to d6 now, maybe. Maybe queen to f6. Okay. A good position here. Hace un rato. Si lo ves por aquí. Vale. Si no, tranquilo. Okay, we've asked for Sadi, so let's see if he can come. I'm, I'm actually liking a lot the position of Aymeric against Max Warmedam. Very good position here for Aymeric. We left it here a while ago. He played knight b5. Doesn't mind giving up this pawn because the knight on f6 is hanging. Well played. Bishop c6. Bishop d4. Capture. Now the knight on b6 was hanging. So play knight to d7. Queen to c2. Rook to d8. Ah, Erigaisi. <laughs> Could you sit down with us for five or ten minutes and show us your game? Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, as you can see, I'm joined by Eddie Geisy. How are you doing? Yeah. Okay. You've played before in, in Menorca. I think you were here the first year? Yes, correct. Also last year? or no, just last year I wasn't. I, re I remember you for the first year. Gesh won that uh, tournament. Yes. How did your game go today? Was it a nice game? Uh, yeah, until a point I think I played well. Okay. And then I misplayed and then in time I should that's, what, that's the sort of... Uh, I was with Miguel Iescas before here. We were checking your game. And we thought that uh, at the uh, more or less in, uh, in, the, in, in the middle game that it seemed that uh, black was comfortable, but it didn't, didn't seem that it was easy to win with the black pieces. So show us how, how, how it went. Look, I, I can, yeah, I'm going to put this here. Okay. A lot of Indian players in the chat asking for uh, yourself or Erigai or, or uh, Nihal. So although this is the screen, if it's at all possible, do the moves here. Uh, let's, let's bring it back to the start. There you go. There you go. Here, something funny happened. Because there was a mistake on the, on the broadcast. And it seemed that there was an exchange of queens on d7, which mm -hmm. didn't make any sense. Yeah, and after a while, they, they corrected it. Yeah, this is a solid line for that. Mm -hmm. And I was expecting him to castle, go b3 at some point. Okay. But e4 was slightly weaker. And Here we were saying bishop to a3, which was, it seemed more or less okay, but we weren't sure at all. Yeah, at first I wanted the key. Okay. But then I realized b4 is the best. Um, okay. Because now the knight and bishop are both pretty much out of the game. Yes. Yes. So I had to go look to it and 
it was not my first choice, but I thought I must do it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, EFI was a good one. And, um, yeah, here this I is very active to you, no? This yeah, position. they went in 94, and here they were calculating 9B4. Oh, nice. And Take on B7. Yeah, there's, a, there's two options, bishop c1 and bishop b2. Mm -hmm. I couldn't evaluate them too well, but I thought I, I should at least have equality because I play something like this and try to play against this knight. Yes. I thought I am at least fine. Yeah, he doesn't have very yeah. many options here. Yeah. So you, you you consider these options? Yeah. I'm not sure if your opponent saw this, but it's an interesting variation. Yeah, and I have to make sure this is okay for me because if I don't take, I just lose the bishop. You're in trouble, yeah. yeah. So you spotted this before playing rook d4 then? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Here I don't look d8 was logical and here I was choosing between rook d3 and rook d7. Mm -hmm. But maybe I should have played rook d3. I did not like rook e1, but I think he would have gone knight c4 anyway. It's very likely. Yeah, because yeah. The speed at which he played knight c5, it seemed like he wanted, he wanted to, to get the knights, yeah. uh, exchange oh. the knights and get the bishop in the position. Yeah, so if uh, if my rook was on d7 in this position, after knight h4, I just move bishop e6 and g5 would be g5, there. yes. But now he has bishop e7. Oh. So that makes a difference. Oh. Yeah. 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 But you, you still have a very comfortable position here, no? Yeah. Uh, here I thought he should go bishop h3. Yeah. And rook f8, rook d1, rook d2. Looking at something like this. There's still work to do in this position, yeah, yes. Yeah, it's not easy. But, but this is the way to play with white, of course. Yeah, you should have tried something like this. Yeah. And even this wasn't that bad, I thought. But exactly had to go bishop h3 here. Oh. What's the point of king f1? Where's the mistake? Actually, I just say that there is f4 directly because gf4, bishop d8. Oh, bishop d8. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Uh, no, not so easy to see. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought I'll just play normally in the yeah. position. Okay, it's not a mistake, but they say it's a mistake because it's worse than the other move. Yeah, because there was a uh, there was a winning move. move so they say your move is a mistake, yeah. but actually it's quite a decent move. Yeah, it's a very yeah. decent. Move. I don't like chess couples doing this. I find that they must find another way of um, giving a, a sign to a move which is decent, but not the best. Mm -hmm. Because then you think, I, I made a mistake. Well, okay, you did do the best move, but it's not really a mistake. Yeah. And here he just blundered. Uh, now no, 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 you're winning, yeah. Bishop g4. Yeah. yeah this is here we actually calculated uh, pawn takes, pawn takes. Um, how was this? Yeah. Pawn takes, pawn takes, rook h1, king g5, yeah, also trapped in the right, yeah. Okay. So, up to here, this was very clean. Um, maybe he could have tried to block on e4 at some point in, in the opening, or, or was this just impossible? Yeah, that's what he was trying. He was trying to do it, but with the knight here, this is impossible. Yeah. Could he have done it some, somehow it here? Like he wonder with bishop a5. Oh, yeah. Miguel actually mentioned this. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm not sure about this position because white can never put the rook on e1 because of bishop a5. Exactly, yeah. Okay, so you had it more or less under control at all yeah, moment. Not much stability in white's position. Mm. If you could end up blocking here, yeah, then, white then it would be at least, at least at equal, least no? Right. Yeah. But there's no way of doing it, and black is very active. Yeah. And this knight on g5 has many problems. Yeah. Okay. Quite a clean performance, and there's going to be surprises today. Mm -hmm. Because. Uh, so, will you be following also the candidates apart from playing here? Not very clearly. Maybe when you finish, are you planning more tournaments in the area, or you just uh, came to play this one? No, after this, I'm going back home. So You're going back home. Yeah. Have you played before? Um, uh, where where uh, have you come from I, before? Okay, I was in Germany for a very long time. Okay, but, but you you didn't play Grinka, didn't you? I did play. Oh, Grinke Grinke you played Grinke. 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 Okay, okay. How did that go for you over there? Uh, it was. Oh, oh, I actually saw. Now I'm remembering. I saw one of your games. Very nice night ending against Egumbos. Oh, no, it was not a night end game. I just got lucky. I know, but the, the, the ending, the, the, the final part, uh, it, it seemed mm -hmm. quite uh, cool and quite interesting. Yeah. But it was true. always a draw or was it difficult to, end, oh, to, to hold he that? He just had to, like even at the very end, he had to go knight h5 instead of 
kicking at three. So he still had chance even to the very end? Yeah, yeah. And I wow. saw that during the game. Okay. But I think he was defending for very long, so he just yes. was tired. He's tired and something that's happened to all of us, yes. Yeah. I, I noticed that he was always moving like this, mm -hmm. uh, but you were com completely composed and, 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 and calculating. And it, it seemed to me that I was wondering if the pawn would not be the F pawn, but maybe another of the pawns, what difference would be there? Uh -huh. But uh, it, I thought it was a very nice ending. I didn't see the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. Eddie thanks a lot for coming along. Thank you. And good luck in the next rounds. Thank you. Thank you. So, we have here our uh, friend Eddie Geisy, uh, number one seed of the tournament. Very strong grandmaster. And as you can see, has provided some cool analysis of the of the game. Um, I didn't see anyone say anything in the chat. I do hope that you were able to hear his uh, analysis and appreciate that he came along. Just give me some feedback to make sure someone heard this at least. If not, I'll be super worried because uh, as far as I can see, the broadcast is working well, but uh, you never know. So if someone could just tell me if, the, if this was recorded correctly or not, I'd appreciate it. I'm going to try and check on my own board. But sometimes you just don't get to see. Ah, fantastic. Anishka says that we did hear Andrew. Just as well. I was a bit worried already. You can say things in the chat if you want, especially when we have a player here. If you ask him any questions, I see them immediately and I'll uh, forward them to there. If you, if you want to ask him a question about anything you, you want, as long as they're uh, good questions and, and reasonable questions, I will forward them to him and see what he says. So, uh, Arjun is very kind. I've interviewed him other times in other tournaments and he's always very kind and very composed and a very, very strong player. You see the variations he calculated give us an idea of how strong he is. So seed number one won the game and let's check on some of the other games. See how power is doing. Okay, so we left it here. He played queen d7. Bishop c4 was the move played by Alexienko. And now, according to the computer, black is better, but he does have to find the move queen d8, which is not at all an easy move to find. Because, of course, a white will not exchange queens, and it doesn't make much sense to move the queen back. It makes much more sense to move the queen to c7. But I'm wondering why that move is not a suggestion of the computer. Let's say we do play queen to c7. There must, there must be something here that uh, that the computer doesn't like. Look, the, the bar goes up. So I wonder what is what the computer is seeing here, which is good for, for white in this position. I can't see it yet. I wonder what it is. Oh, there's been a move. So let's see what Powell played. He played queen c7, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see, let's go back and forward. Yeah. So for some reason this move is not the precise the most precise move. There's no clear continuation, but I think it has to do with the fact that uh, in this position the queen is still very active on h4. Computer suggests rook to d2. Doesn't seem to me to be a very, very strong move. And black could play rook to d8, probably. And now how do we continue? Ah, here here are the tricks. Here are the tricks. Here are all the tricks. Yeah, I understand now. Because if he takes, you take on d8. And if he takes on d2, knight to g5 check, I think, is winning by the mate. So now, now I understand. Now I understand. The reason queen d8 is important is to be able to knock this queen out of the way so that when he goes queen to c7, he can bring the rook to d8. Yes, no, not so easy to see. So let's see what Alexenko does. Still very, very good time. Yeah, he played rook to d2. No, this hasn't been played. Let's see what move he did. He played rook to d3. No. Oh, things have gone. This has been, there's been some changes. Let's see. So, 
Oh, he didn't play rook c4, so this is a variation. Okay, so now we're in this position here. Bishop to b3, bishop to b5, queen d8, queen f2, hit the rook, queen d3, queen g5. Okay, now he probably has to take, take, and now black can start his own counterattack. This could be, this could be good for Pau. I wonder if he'll, he'll be able to find the way to win this position. This would be really fantastic. So the line, according to the computer, the line goes rook knight takes, rook takes, queen takes b6 to become equal in material, check. And now, of course, this is a troublesome position because there are checks on f4, moves such as bishop to g5. Now, this is a difficult move to see. The idea is to prevent rook to d8. Okay, so it's clear that according to the computer, black is better, but anything can happen here. Anything can happen here. This is a difficult position. Okay, so I'm going to take my last break. I'm going to leave you a game on the board. And then when we come back, we'll see a few more moves and then wrap it up towards the end of the round. Okay, I'm going to leave you this ending on the board. No, this is a bad position. Let's see what's happened here. But this can't, can't be possible because there's an extra rook on the board. Okay, so we don't know what happened here. We just suspect it was king takes d6, but we don't know. So let's leave on the board. Let's leave the game, this game here. And so when we come back, we can carry on this game here. Okay, stay with me and we'll be back in five minutes.
Hey guys, so we're back again and we're going to try and find some interesting moves to finish off this broadcast. I was watching the game between Alexenko and Pau live and some really interesting things have happened. So let's go to the key position. Now here, according to the computer, this is a mistake and the correct move would have been to play, play bishop g5, just trying to stop this rook to d8. And here it seems that black might still be slightly better. But Powers played this move here with the check, thinking that this is good for him. But now the problem is that if he goes with the queen, of course there, there might be a draw here. But if he takes this pawn, there's a checkmate, which maybe Powell didn't see. And there's a checkmate with the bishop, like this. So this is one of the lines that Pau may have missed when he went for this line. Uh, I'm not totally sure. So he had to go back with the bishop. And now white should play h4, which he's done. And now not, he not only attacks the bishop, and depending where the bishop goes, there might be some problems with rook d8, but also he's giving himself a free square for the queen. And now maybe black should have just played these checks and try and get a draw. But he's played e4, and this might be a mistake. This might be a mistake. Pawn takes pawn. And it's unclear to me why he sacrificed this pawn. Bishop c2, and I think he's going downhill now. Now, if he finds, if he finds yeah, one of these two moves are very strong. Yeah. The bishop to c2 hits the queen, hits the rook, and pretends to capture the pawn. And then do mate on h1. This sounds good, but white hits the rook and offers extra protection to the rook. And this is the position where they are now. Uh, things are not going well because now he'll move the rook. I'll capture the bishop. And yeah, this might be this might be losing. Yeah. This is most probably losing. Most probably losing. Ah, it's going to be a pity for Powell because he, he had a winning position before. More time at the clock. But then again, this is part of the, of the learning process. And getting winning positions or very good positions against grandmasters. And having enough uh, talent and calculation to finish them off. So he'll, he won't feel good about this game. But for sure, it's an important learning process for him. Okay, let's check the rest of the results. Results are coming in. Let me check if they're coming in also on the chess results. And I'll show you them on the screen. Okay, let's open up chess results. Here we are. And you can see them on the screen for yourself. Hopefully now. Menorca, here we are. Round one. And there we go. Results are coming in. There we have some results already. Eddie Geisi has won on the first board against Rovers. Nikhail Sarin has defeated Xavi Alfonso. Fedosev against Bolat. Now here you can clearly see all the strong players that are playing. Uh, look, Chigaev, Kartik Vintakaraman, Albornoz, Pranav, Idani. Uh, a huge amount of very, very strong players. Uh, Nandi Nanda here and if we go down if we go further down some surprises always in first rounds we're starting to see some some surprises but if we go down look at the amount of grandmasters board 44 Pepe Cuenca Pepe Cuenca playing against Carlos Martinez my friend Carlos playing against Pepe Cuenca 2500 player Lamart Spor Zida all these are excellent 2500 players um, Setien, he's the former trainer of the Barcelona Football Club uh, team. So as, as as soon as we're going down, we're seeing Seaman, he's the champion of Europe, of under-18, uh, from Poland. So Zuzina, best uh, Chinese player, woman, female player, 
and probably the better, the, most, the strongest female player here uh, currently. So yes, you can, we can already see a huge amount of very, very strong players. As we go down the list, uh, still we have international masters down here like Olaf Wegener, Sabrina Vega, look Sabrina Vega, board number 94. So this is a tremendously strong tournament with uh, international masters and grandmasters down to board 100. So Faustino Oro, the wondered kid from Argentina, also down the bottom here. So as you can see, a tremendously strong tournament. Let's change change the board. Maybe go and see one of the other games. Let me try and find interesting games for you guys. Alan Pichon's won his game. Aymeric Wardenham. This one's interesting. Aymeric, five pawns. But of course, before, War Merdam had a much worse position. And now, he's practically equal. Uh, which makes me think that at some point, he'll take over the initiative and go on to win this game. Because these, these players are so strong that uh, if they get... Uh, if you get a good position against them, you really have to close it. Because if not, they come back afterwards. This is my experience playing against strong grandmasters. I played against Chitaram last, last year in Formentera, the tournament after this one. Uh, a very strong player. He's playing here, 26-60. And I had a position which could have been a draw. I made a couple of mistakes, lost my edge, and, and the game was a disaster for me. So you really have to have full concentration and play very well because... These guys are super strong. Yeah, this looks a bad position. G4. Yeah, War Madame. Uh, they, they're, getting, they're getting to the time trouble. He's going to open up the king and come with the two knights and the queen. And this could be a very strong attack. I, I would actually suggest for uh, a medic try and exchange off the queens. Somehow get a bit of potential off the board okay so Voladin won let's see how Voladar won his game we left it here a5 g1 going for this g4 move 1994 this is a good move so when the knight comes to here we can knock it out with f3 g4 Exchange sacrifice to try and reduce the attack, but nothing going. Sacrifice, sacrifice. Okay, so if he captured here, then bishop takes f5. It's basically game over. So he took here. And in any case, this is game over. Okay, so if you want to see the games, Scott, you have two alternatives. You can either go to chess.com, which is where I'm getting the games from now, or you can go to um, Lee Chess, okay? So I'm going to put the link to the chess.com. I'm going to put it in the chat now so you can see it. There you go. So if you click on that link there, you will go to the game which we're analyzing now. And from here... You can go and see the other games if you want to see them on in real time. Thanks for your question, Scott. Yeah, let's see if Power is able to hold this, but it's looking bad for him. He played rook to b8. Took. 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 Okay, now most probably he'll capture the pawn on g5. And it's two bishops and four pawns against rook and four pawns. Uh, this is... Maybe he can try and get a perpetual check. If not, he's lost. Rook to d8. Okay. Okay, hitting the bishop and the check behind it. Okay. Okay, this is not so easy. Not so easy because if he moves the bishop, there's check. So basically, he has to play queen to b5 to protect this pawn, 
and against Czech block with the bishop. This is not so simple. But of course, Alexenko is a very strong player. So if there's a move to find, he will probably find it. And playing queen to b5 protects all his weaknesses. And from there he can progress. So he'd have to find this move here. He will have to give up something though. Possibly the, the e4 pawn. And try and find some sort of consolidation in this position. Now he should be winning. But uh, there's still some chances. Of course the g5 pawn is very strong if it doesn't fall. Because it blocks the three pawns of black here. So we'll come back here afterwards and see how this finishes. But let's progress. Some other games. Oh, this is a fun game. See what happened here. So. Okay, so. There's mating threats here. Check. 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 Knight to g4 protecting against the mate. Another threat of mate. Check. Blocks. Sack. H7, but there's mate here. So why why did he do this? Now queen h1 is mate. Or am I missing something here? No, no, I'm not missing anything. But he's taking his time. So maybe there's something wrong with the broadcast because this is mate in one move. It's very strange. Something must be wrong here. I mean, it's very strange that uh, Chopra hasn't played his move. Okay, yeah, he won. So probably it was h7 and resigned. Okay, so one more result in. We're going to be wrapping up very soon. Most of the main games are finished. This is another game which will be lost. This was an equal position, but gradually, slowly, Rinat has improved his position. He's going to start eating pawns. Go with this king to d2. This looks very, very, very likely that black is going to win this game here. So, Scott, uh, Hans Minimum was playing in this event. He was down for today. He was even in the original pairings. But uh, at about three in the afternoon, he he notified that he wasn't coming. And the reasons are still slightly unclear. Um, because yesterday he won the tournament in Grinke, so it does seem that uh, that he's healthy and, and, in, and in good shape. I'll try and find the reasons and, and offer them tomorrow in the morning round. <clears throat> so for those of you who want to follow the <clears throat> the broadcast in English, we have rounds in the morning and in the afternoon, tomorrow 10 and in the afternoon 4, uh, 4.30. So uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm going to put my Twitter account here. And I'm also on Instagram. This is my Twitter account. So I suggest you follow me on Twitter so you can see my um, my post with the timetable of the rounds and I'm also on Instagram with my full name you can find me there I'll normally be posting some information of the timetables and, and the rest of the stuff we had Eddie Geisy before if anyone wants to go back and watch the the video you'll see Eddie Geisy at uh, just slightly before okay so let's see I think we're going to be wrapping up very soon. I'm going to try and find out what time Spanish is wrapping up. Okay, meanwhile, while we get this information, Let's check another game. And Machenko is holding on very well here. For quite a while he's had an equal position and they're currently in this ending here. Four pawns against four pawns, two pieces each. Maybe you could argue that it's very slightly better for black 
but uh, maybe not even that. Yeah, we could argue that the knight on c4 hitting on a3 might give a very small edge to to white, but I, I doubt that that's enough to win. For example, king d3, knight c4, bishop c1. And I do think that probably white should be able to hold this position. It's never easy. But there's a weakness on a3, and there is a possible weakness on h2 as well. So black can still press here, but uh, I think that with decent defense, white should be able to hold the draw. Check another game. Titumbaram has won. And what has our friend Kirill done? He's gone for another another way of playing. He's got bishop to e7. Okay. Queen takes pawn. King h3. Oh, he blocked with the bishop. This should be okay as well. And this is the way he's found to try and consolidate his position. Okay. So basically he wants to put the bishop on f6 protecting these two pawns. The other bishop, he, this pawn is never captured because of the queen a8. The other bishop will go to, to, to c4, the king to h3, and this is the way he wants to win the game. So let's see if technically this is possible. Let's go a4, only move. Let's see if he did it. Yep, he played a4. How would this work? I don't think he's going to play queen to d3. I think he's going to play queen to h, king to h3. So let's play king to h3. And now a3. Now I was thinking bishop to c4. What's happening here? Oh, queen to b1. Oh. And there are some threats now behind. With possible perpetual checks. So this is not so simple. Not so simple at all. So instead of playing king to h3, we have to play differently. Now this does become a bit tricky if you have to find moves such as queen, queen to d3, a3, and c4. This is very difficult to see. But of course he'll find it because it opens up the bishop to protect the a1 square. Yeah, this is very, very good. And he can even swap diagonals and go for the mates. Wow, if he's seen this... This would be impressive. These are computer variations I'm giving you here. If he's seen this, it's impressive. Let's stay here. And see if he plays queen to d3. He has to put the queen on d3. Because if he plays c4 straight away, hitting the queen, then he drops the bishop. So queen to d3. But he has to calculate queen to d3, a3, c4. He must make sure that there's no tricks and the pawn doesn't get to queen. But I think Alexienko is clearly capable of seeing this variation. Let's stay here and see if he plays it. A pity, a pity for Bob because he played a very, very good game. Okay, he's played. King h3, not the best move. Not the best move. According to the computer, he still keeps the advantage. But now, as we saw before, there are some chances of getting these ideas in. So not the best, a very practical move, a logical move, but not the best move. Let's see if there's more results coming in. Okay, let's update this. Okay. As you can see, Nieman is not on the original list. And there was a forfeit on board four, where Van Forest won by forfeit against Shakil Ab Sudabi. Quite unbelievable that Eddie Geisy, who's one of the best 10 best players in the world, has come to Menorca to, to play. He did come two years ago, so it's really nice for him to come again and, and say hello to all his fans here. Okay, King Day 3, let's check another game meanwhile. Not many games left now. 
Oh, I really went down downhill. Yeah, the king is open and the knights have come to force the mate. Ah, a pity. Another game that uh, that Aymeric had played very well with White, but these these guys, I mean, they hold onto very difficult positions, and then when you, when you think you nearly have them, boom, they come back and and, and punish you heavily. The round is finishing. Not much left. Nearly all the games of the first boards are finished, and there's only two or three left, which are practically decided. So very soon we'll be wrapping up. Let's stay with the game of Pau, see if he's, he's able to somehow find a way to get back into the game here. But it's going to be difficult. I'm going to check the, the hour tomorrow. I don't want to make a mistake. Let's see. Let's make sure the timetable is correct. Okay. Yep. 10 o'clock and 5 o'clock. Yep. So 10 and 5 and Thursday the same. 10 and 5. And Friday only one round in the afternoon. So. We have a free morning. It's going to be tough, these double rounds. Tough for the players, but tough for the commentators as well. It's a tough life, commentating chess. Okay, so powers play queen to c2, which is not one of the best moves according to the computer, but all the lines are very, very tricky. But it doesn't mean that he had, Alexenko has to find bishop to f3. Let's see what he did. He played bishop to f3, well, not so difficult to see. Protects the pawn, protects the king, but now the a, the a pawn can't advance, so this is becoming a bit more difficult now. At any moment, the c pawn is going to start to advance, and this will be a problem. But okay, let's uh, hope for the best. What I really like is Alexienko, how he's moved his bishop to f6, defending his two weaknesses, but more importantly, uh, not allowing black to get his to get to 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 avoid being mated on the eighth rank actually the computer suggesting here the move h5 which is very interesting you sacrifice the pawn but now the bishop doesn't have the stronghold of the pawn and the king can go to h7 but h5 is a very difficult move to do i'm, I'm not sure that power will find this move course black is already threatening to blow you can still hold here this could be a mistake the game could have a turnaround now there could be a turnaround now a3 threatening a2 now what is his idea why did he play g3 to play king to g3 a2 okay c4 okay the pawn is controlled but we go around the back queen b1 now we're threatening to check around the back. C5. Protecting. Alexenko's probably saw, he's probably visualized something like this, where his bishop and the queen protect against the promotion, and he probably thinks that he can get through. Uh, 
we're looking at the game of uh, Pau Marin, and we'll finish when this game finishes, if that's okay with you. Yeah. No. Ten, 10 minutes, 15 minutes? Okay. So we, we have about 10 minutes left to broadcast, and we'll stay with this game to see if it finishes, and if not, then we'll go over it tomorrow. But so, uh, yeah, A3, Bishop to B4 played. Now, now he's, he wants to put the queen on f6. So Pau needs to find a move urgently. Now he probably considered that the only move is rook to d8. Queen to f6. But now we can probably sacrifice the rook. And this may only be a draw. a2. And now he has to check to the draw. And actually it doesn't want to draw. So let's hope Pau is able to find the move. Let's, let's hope he's able to find the move. Uh, rook to d8. What he can't do is play a2. If he plays e2, queen f8, he's going to get mated here. So he needs to find rook to d8 and sacrifice the exchange. Doesn't seem so difficult. He's played. Let's see what he played. Yes, rook d8. Very well. Well, well played. He doesn't know it yet, but he's on the way to draw this game. Okay. Okay, now this is not so easy because he's threatening rook takes bishop and the pawn is very near queen. Now, of course, bishop to f8 would be a, a, a draw repetition. This is clear. But what other chance do we have to win? Doesn't seem many more chances to win. So maybe, maybe in the end, power is going to be able to get his draw. It would be fantastic. It would be fantastic if he's able to, to clinch a draw here with black against the player. So strong as uh, Kirill Alexeyenko. This would be fantastic. Very, very good. Very good progression by Pau in the last two or three, the last two or three years. Very good progression. A game with mistakes by both of them. But I think Alexeyenko will be impressed by the level of play of his opponent in this game. Holding, holding a draw with black against such a strong player is very, very difficult. So if he's able to do it, this will be very good. Okay, so Alexinko's played. He's played bishop f6. And now we have to go back with the rook. He has to go back. And the game might end in a draw. But I wonder if Alexinko will want to draw here. But how can he play to win this position? That's the thing. And can Pau play to win? No. He can't abandon the first line with the rook. He has to stay at the back. So he can't play for a win either. Hmm. Oh, don't go down to one minute. Try and force. Oh, okay, he played. He just went back. Okay, now let's see if Alexenko with the one minute and let half he's got left. Let's see what he can do. It's a very sharp line. Not in the during the game. So let's see if he. Basically, the games are finishing, but they haven't updated the results yet. So, let's see how this game finishes. Let's see if Alexei Inko decides to play Bishop D4, and the game will head will be headed to a draw. He's on 46 seconds, 45, 44. He played. Oops. 
he went back and Paros repeated so with a bit of luck the game might finish in a draw let's see what he played yeah this looks like a repetition I think Pau I'm not sure if Pau can claim a draw here no not yet He needs, to, he needs to play rook e8 and then claim a draw on the next move. But I don't think there's other, uh, uh, there is another move. Okay, he, could, he could play the c4 move, but I'm not sure if he's going to do that. Kirill is also very low on, low on time. And if he doesn't see a win and carries on and makes a mistake, this would be a disaster. He played rook e8. And now it's time for White to claim a draw with Bishop to d4. Which I suppose is what's going to happen. And in the end, everything has worked out okay for Pau. He did have a better position, but it wasn't easy. And a draw is an excellent result with Black here against um, Kirill. I'd be amazed if Kirill changes gears now and, and goes for a win with another move. After repeating three times. Okay, what did he do? Oh! He changed. He's going for a win. Wow. So he used the the Russian technique, which is repeat three times and then change your move. And the other guy thinks he has a draw and then he has to deal with a new situation. So he probably already had Queen C6 prepared from before. He repeated three times. And when it's his turn to claim a draw, continues playing. It's very tricky, very tricky. Okay, Powell played. Ah, he made a mistake already, right after the move. Mistake. And now queen to a4, hits the pawn, and then c4. Ah, this was very, very tricky by, very tricky played by Alexeyenko. Very tricky played. Guys, we're going to leave it for now. I think it's time to, to wrap up. We've done four full hours of broadcast. And this game now, I think, will head towards a win by Alexeyenko because the thing is now a2 c4 the thing is he attacks the pawn and protects the the coronation which wasn't happening before and uh, this ending which is highly probable I think although although there's a lot of work to do I think this must be a technical win for for white he can put the get the king to here transfer the bishop to d5 the king is locked in. This must be a technical win for white, although a lot of work to do. So, see you tomorrow at noon. And I hope you've had a good broadcast with me. And uh, we'll carry on tomorrow. See you later, guys.